This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Sattva Luxury Mattress, the only online mattress company that provides free delivery, setup, and mattress removal. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Your Mom's House with Tom Segura. Tom Segura. And Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to Your Mom's House. Good morning, Julia. All right, here we are. <laughs> back for another episode of your Mom's House Palmcast. It's a big day here, Jean. Huge day. Huge day. First of all, my Netflix uh, half hour on the Degenerates premieres today. Actually, it'll be yesterday by the time you see this. October 30th. It's ready. I am number six. Uh, on the lineup, Joey Diaz is right before me, so you can catch your two faves. But check out The Degenerates on Netflix. And also, I am proud to announce that I am also Polly and Bi. Yep. You need to tell your parents about it. Now. I got to tell everybody about that. Also, I'm announcing a tour 2019, and it's called... The Ride or Die Tour. Oh, God. That's incredible. <laughs> okay. Fuck. You guys are doing good. <laughs> yeah. So first, San Diego, November 24th, second show, 10 p.m., almost sold out. Get your tickets. Filler up Delphia, second show. Also, that one's going fast, December 7th. Uh, and then December 8th, Jew Dork Titties. That late show is just about gone in Jew Dork Titties at the Gramercy Theater. All right, here we go. 2019, January 10th at the Comedy Store in the main room here in Hollywood, California. And then I go January 31st to February 2nd, Denver, Colorado at the Comedy Works. February 28th to March 2nd, Madison, Wisconsin, the Comedy Club on State. April 4th through 6th, Mini Apple Tits. Uh, Acme Comedy Club. That's the first time I'm ever doing that one, so I'm super excited to go there. May 10th and 11th, Tempe at the Improv, and June 20th to 22nd, Washington Dickcom at the Dickcom Improv. So that's just the first six months of the tour. And I know y'all asked me uh, to give you a lot of time so you can come to all of these. Uh, this is my big ass club tour and my small theater tour. That's right. There you go, Christina P. Online for tickets. Gene? Gene, uh, huge shout out. Thanks to everybody that came to the shows in Fresno and Bakersfield. I had a blast. I did not know I would have such a good time, and I did. I appreciate you guys. This week, there's very, very few tickets left. A um, hundred or so in Fart Myers, <laughs> and a hundred in Augusta, Georgia. Jacksonville and Orlando are sold out. You said all those names wrong. Montclair is completely sold out, both shows in New Jersey. Filler Up Delphia um, has tickets to the late show on Friday, November 16th. And here's what I got for you for uh, the Take It Down tour. You go to tomscurra.com slash tour. You can see all the dates. We've been adding shows all over the place, including the first added show January 4th in San Francisco. But, <clears throat> excuse me, the two most recent ads... Uh, we adding them today are Madison, Wisconsin, April 11th. We're adding a late show, and we are adding another show before that, uh, February 16th in Cleveland. Cleveland. Cleveland is French. Uh, Ohio. Thank you so much to both of those cities. Uh, the demand has uh, merited second shows there as well. And I've had shows all over the country, so... Uh, for people that keep and continuously mention cities that I have <laughs> not just announced, um, I'm telling you, they're going to come. I'm going to do a probably a, a couple months into the new year. I will announce the second half of 2019. I appreciate you asking me about it. It'll be all over Canada. It'll be all the U.S. cities that you're wondering why I'm not hitting. They're all going to be there. Let's get into some good stuff, Gene. We have incredible clips. We have an incredible guest. It's going to be really a lot of fun today. Where is... Here we go. Here's our first one. Let's do it. Are you ready, Gene? Mm-hmm. Ready to get into this? Mm-hmm. Let's start. Make sure that this is ready to go. Here we go. 25, residential. Got it? Hey, fuck you, both of you. 25, 25, residential. Fuck you both. This 
shit is big time. Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother to this. Your mom in the fucking stand. Well, welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. Big fan of this lady. We'll get into this in a second. Before I forget, um, I want to uh, just remind people that they'll see something unusual, whether they're watching or listening. This week, we're going to tack on. We had an opportunity to sit with Kate from Below Deck. Ah, so I love her so much. When the episode appears to be about to end, we're going to smack on a real talk segment. Mm-hmm. Um, real talk for the new listeners is we used to really talk about a lot of reality shows a lot. And uh, it's one of our first segments. And we had the great opportunity to have her here in studio. Mm-hmm. So we talked to her for quite a while. It's Below Deck on Bravo. We've talked about the show before. Oh, we love it. Yeah. And I, we, you know, we fell in love with Kate from the minute we saw her because her whole thing is she's the chief stewardess, chief yeah. stew, and she has resting bitch face. Yeah. And she's fucking fantastic. And you're going to love the interview. We learn all about the yachting world and You'll never guess how much it costs to charter a yacht for a week. You'll it's die a, when you It's a really interview. fascinating conversation God. with a really fun, funny, interesting lady. Yeah, so she's great. Um, there's that. So this lady... not This is not Kate. This is not Kate. <laughs> I mean, they look uh, not the same. Not the same. Um, so this lady is... God, I love this woman too, though. I love her spirit. I identify with her, actually. Yeah, so do I. I mean, it's it's really unnerving when you're on a nice walk with your... Dog or your child, and you see yeah. someone speeding. God the damn it, man! Now she's a little heated, but you know it's it happens, man. Twenty-five residential. <laughs> Got it. Hey, <laughs> fuck you, both of you. Twenty-five. Twenty-five residential. Fuck you both. <laughs> <laughs> I feel this way every time a motherfucker speeds on our street. Don't you? Of course, I hate Dude, it. Dude, I am I inches away from being this woman right now. I've talked Just, to the police department about the speeding on Earth. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. I also can't wait until I'm this age when like menopause is officially over and I'm no longer a and woman. You can shut, shut it. Shut it down. down. Stop wearing a bra, put on just sweatpants all day, every day, ratty ass sneakers, the Where's yep. Waldo shirt, and get yep. that butch haircut, dude. I'm and all get, about it. You're, you're ready for it. I'm and ready. and a sporty watch too, a digital sporty watch. digital watch. <laughs> and yeah, you're just about. I'm halfway that dog there. Walk. I got the sweatshirt on already. Your only priority <laughs> is giving your dog a high quality of life. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's all I want. Are you serious? I'm serious. You You're in a goddamn out. residential neighborhood. 25 up the hill. See that? 25. Yeah. Don't you understand? Chill out, okay? Chill out yourself, assholes. Yes. I love her. Can we hire her to stand? What else stand? do you think she's upset about? Can though? we hire her to stand on our street and do that? Oh. Wouldn't you love it? I would love it. That's such a good idea. Yeah. Give her a megaphone, though, <laughs> so it projects. 25. Asshole. Always. Asshole. And like, as people are driving, you just, you just hear You're things. both pieces of shit. <laughs> people are looking around like, what? Hey, fuck you, both of you. <laughs> it's pretty great. You know, there's something about women. When you take out the instinct to attract a man... When that instinct is either gone through nature, yeah. stopping your menses, or by being a lesbian, like those women are like super women. I just love them so they much. They really are great. When you don't give a shit if guys like your energy, it changes everything. It changes every- It's so funny, dude. It's it's just the best. It changed my energy. Did it- <laughs> by the way, there's another. Um, when I stopped caring, is that what you're saying? Yeah, no, when I stopped caring. Um, about male, male about attention. About male approval and attention. Yeah. People. Uh, are following closely Sober October. I know. And the uh, Ari just posted, the he, did, he did a crazy workout. I just saw it. Um, On Instagram, I saw it. His Yeah, the, the... He wrecked you. Yeah, but guess what? What? I didn't upload my workout from yesterday. Oh, shit. So, have no fear, guys. I can't believe how many people thought I would let them down. None of us are going to win because Joe's too far in the lead. Yeah, he's going to win. What I promise you is that I won't come in last. <clears throat> well, that's the shame spot. That's the shame spot. That's really the only thing. This Sober October, that's the goal is to just not be last. You can't be last. Because, yeah, Joe's going to be number one, obvi. Yeah. 
Bert's gonna on the, the 11th hour like like yeah Joe or Bert yeah Bert Halloween night it. he's gonna be up at like midnight no we actually 30. have a cutoff time when's the cutoff the cutoff time is 7 p.m. Pacific 10 Eastern on October 31st mm-hmm. wow yeah you think Bert's been sober this whole time um I do I do think he's been sober this whole time okay I really wish we could have had the the bracelet. I know. That would have been so funny, dude. This, and surveillance. It's called Scram or something. The scram bracelet. <laughs> 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 or we would get alerts if, he, if alcohol entered his system. That would be so, so humiliating. Funny. I know. It would be so funny. If we put the word out now, maybe in one year's time, somebody can donate that to the yeah. cause. Is there anybody listening that has a, a scram, scram bracelet, bracelet they could donate they're to like, Sober October? There are hundreds of dollars. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm putting the call out now. We have one year. Someone who's affiliated with it will Next. show up. All right. Anyways. Here we go. Yeah. 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 Figure it out. Figure it out. 25. <laughs> I hope you get a goddamn fucking citation for a million dollars, you both pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Her dog is really uh, chill for having such a, a fired up owner. Well, she's in control of him. Right she's now. in control, dude, of you life. Live an unhappy life. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> You. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Get a speeding ticket, fuckheads. <laughs> fuckheads. That's my favorite God damn part. it. You know, the one thing I like. <laughs> yeah, to <see> you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get a speeding ticket, fuckheads. My mom would do that. To Your people. mom would totally yeah, do that. Yeah, all the time. It made me laugh a lot. Yeah. She One time she mocked a woman who was fake. Her crying She was like well, They were fighting Over a parking spot And she was like Oh you're going to cry Oh your pussy crying Like oh yeah It's totally so crazy like this uh, Oh my god But this chick's way funnier But she's fired up About other stuff though well, For sure yeah It's misdirected anger Yeah it's always like When you're this angry I mean god damn Yeah Just go She lives an unhappy Fuck life Fuck off yeah. Both of you <laughs> Fuck you Got it go. Hey babe <laughs> Fuck you. Got it? Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm on the outside, babes. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. That's a little too far. This This is is uh, mental. Yeah, yeah. she needs help. This might be drugs or metal in this segment. Yeah, that too. She definitely needs a better haircut. Needs a new haircut. Um, And then she went from a really funny. To a little scary. It went, it went over. <laughs> it yeah. went a little overboard. It was hilarious, yeah. and then there's bending, and then there's breaking it. Yeah, yeah. She's got that Lloyd Christmas haircut, with yeah. the the short bangs. That shit never looks good, dude. Like the you short, know what it short is? bangs. She probably, oh, no, this never looks good. No, she probably watched people speed for like years. And oh yeah. The, and these are the first people that she realizes she can yell at like this. Sure, it's your home, no. dude. Okay, Look. they are doing forty miles an hour. I'm crossing the street by my goddamn dog. These oh, little pieces of shit. <laughs> just go. Okay, yeah, just go. Just go. Yeah, she's not wearing a bra. She you don't is think not, so? No, I just saw the, her nips. And you think she swinging. has nice ones? Yeah, like mine. No, dude, hers are hanging low. She needs a better bra. I would like this. You know how, uh, where else I would like her? On the speaker at the <laughs> um, grocery store. Yeah. When yes. the lines really back up, yes. you know, and people start taking their time. I really like that. You know where I want her? Trader Joe's parking lot. Yeah. When that motherfucker who's in the parking spot and they're not backing out immediately. Yeah. Whoever's checking their email, sitting in the parking spot. I go, agree. dude. I agree. You have two seconds. Yeah. Go. Fuck oh. you. Right. you <laughs> Fuck yeah. you. Fuck you. All I'm asking is... Oh. She's still talking. Oh, she's still talking. <laughs> they're driving away and she's still... That's when you're really fired up. Yeah. Dude, that ruined her whole day. That was really something. That was really something. These little pieces of shit. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So good. Life is so magical, isn't it? It is really fascinating. See, I can see myself going down that path. Like, let's say I'm a widow. Mm -hmm. You die, and I'm that age. And I, I'm not getting with other dudes. The kids are grown. It's just me and the five dogs. Five dogs and me. People are speeding. People are speeding. And all I have is this house. Fucking motherfuckers. Yeah. All I have is my property. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then these disrespectful punks parked they were, their car. They were probably speeding. They, they probably were. were. They were. You know, they all do, dude. These kids. Yeah. Um, in your Mustang. 
I don't know what this is here. It says the diarrhea challenge. Oh. My wife refuses to eat my ass because she thinks it's gross. Yeah, of course. However, she has agreed to what I'm calling the no diarrhea challenge. Or if I can go 90 days without having <laughs> diarrhea, she will try it out and eat my ass for a full two minutes. <laughs> Problem is I can't go more than 72 hours. <laughs> Without my beehole doing an impersonation of the chocolate fountain that was at my sister's wedding. Any <laughs> advice? Yeah, man. I mean, I really am pulling for you here, but I think number one, it's pretty obvious. You need to change your diet dramatically. Or see a doctor. Yeah, see a doctor, but make, make diet changes first. You might be able to solve it on your own. Oh, it's IBS. Because our dog was having bouts of diarrhea and the first thing that checks inflamed out bowels is, is your diet. Check that diet. He might be all right. Like he might be lactose intolerant. Yeah, or he just might be having like high fat or high fat. I mean, you know, you just gotta you gotta figure out what you're eating and maybe changing it. Well, like when I eliminated sugar, my dumps changed dramatically. Yeah, you're very sensitive to yeah. sugar and fried foods. Yeah. Like if we have a roll at sushi and it's there's fried in it, can't do it. You get diarrhea immediately. Yeah, and then you're like, I'm not eating it tonight. Right. Um, oh, I never eat your butt. For especially full, those nights. For though. the record. For the record, those nights you're like, nah, not anymore. Never, dude. Not anymore. Ugh. This is a. Uh, oh, this was our. <gasps> I love below deck. Today. I know we had our discussion about the. That remember chick, the money? Hannah. Yeah. Hannah and K- Cooper Caperson. Yeah, something like that. Conrad. But Conrad. The, the bosun. The, to remind people, the discussion was about how they were going to about to go out one night. And the guy reminded the girl he, who he had just like started dating a few weeks ago that she still owed him 50 bucks. Mm. And it created this very uncomfortable argument mm. and it eventually basically led to them falling apart. Yeah. So here is a, an email about that. I was listening to your podcast this week. Enjoy your discussion about the age gap couple on below deck. A variable that stuck out to me was that the gift in question was a carton of cigarettes. <laughs> the guy right. might not support Hannah's habit of smoking and not want to enable to a certain extent. Oh. For me, I'd eat the 50 bucks if it was dinner or clothes, but not cancer sticks. However, I'm not as European as these boat employees. I also have not seen this season, so maybe they both smoke. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Grace. Yeah, they do, actually. They both do. They both smoke. But that was an interesting uh, thought on her part. That maybe he was uh, kind of whatever. Yeah, no, he wasn't. He wanted his 50 bucks back. Yeah, Yeah. he was cheap. Yeah, he wanted his 50 bucks. Or just poor. I should say poor. Um, I mean, I don't know. I get it, dude. Poor is not fair. He's a working guy. He's not poor. But when you were 21 or 23, 50 bucks was like... But poor implies basically unemployed and struggling to get by. Yeah, in a box in India. Yeah, he was being cheap. That's true. Um, Look, it's a real exciting day. Let's just celebrate. Okay. Hey, everyone. Garth Brooks here. Uh, Maybe you know me as Trisha Wood's husband. (laughs) I'm saying today is the day. Celebrate. It's the Queen's birthday, so I'm taking over all our socials, asking you to post hashtag happy birthday, Trisha. Okay, there's some... uh, Cakes, cupcakes, uh, your favorite meal, whatever. Well, she'll eat them all. She knows you love her, okay? She loves you. I love you. Thank you. Oh, (laughs) He's probably like, you. who the fuck let that Corn. thing go off? Okay, can't tell you how great of a weekend <sighs> that was. Started in Portland, came here to Dallas, now home to Nashville for some sleep. Yay, we've had a wonderful time. Love you guys. Thank you for everything. Everything. <sighs> Can we start with the first one? Yeah, sure. Now, I, here's the thing. To the casual observer, and, and I've been reposting these on Instagram, and I read the comments, and some people are like, what a psycho, dead behind the eyes, 100% oh, yeah. crazy. And then there's the oddball who's like, well, what's wrong with Garth? He seems super nice. And you're like, you're missing the point. Yeah, but that's you're the same type of it. person, though. That likes You can't that explain shit. it to him. Yeah. You can't explain someone like that. There's like yeah. people who get it and then don't get yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, I know. When I posted... His stuff. Yeah. I mean, it was 90% like, what a fucking <laughs> bloodthirsty maniac. And then <laughs> like six people were yeah. like, how dare you? He's a saint. Um, hey, I the- can't believe that you don't, you know, like he's the greatest. And I was well, like, there's okay. no debate. Listen, we're not debating this man is talented. He's no? so talented yeah, and he's course. so successful and, and he's beloved by many. There's no question about that. However, I feel like he's being disingenuous when he does these social media posts but because here's why he's, he's not being him and you can tell it reads so false. But do you know why he's not being himself? Because he's a demon on the inside. That's right. He is a demon on the inside and he also... The darkness is there. He's so removed 
from regular people. Yes. And he's been so famous. First of all, yes. so famous. Yes, I know. Not you're famous, going. but so famous. Yes. For so long. So long, dude. That he has no idea, no, no idea how to connect with like he he's imagining like the the guy at the gas station who's like, "Hey Garth." And that's right. who he's like, "I got to talk to that guy." And he's always <sighs> right. Big smiles and waves and <laughs> you, you, I remember yeah. me. I'm a big fan. I, I like that you guys are fans. Too. I'm a fan yeah. of you. That's the yeah, funny yeah, thing. Yeah, you think you're a fan of me? I'm a fan of you. Well, he's faking sincerity and mostly he's faking being humble. Mm. And I think that's what reads to me like Come on now, like you're faking, and also the shit about I'm Mr. Yearwood here. Oh my God. I, I'm Mr. Yearwood, which is so fucking condescending to the wife. It's so fucking condescending. Like, first of all, your fame level is st- just st- stratosphere. Like, yeah. you're the top of the top of the food chain of show business, dude. Yeah. Nobody rivals Garth, I think, in terms of like, no way. Say, like he's amazing. Yeah. So for him to be like, <laughs> I'm just a humble pie, Mr. You, I'm bullshit. Mr. It's bullshit. The guy easily has a triple digit body count and we don't know what? how many people he's killed. Oh. <laughs> and I, I feel like, you know. Yeah, game recognized games. You, you dig up plots of land on his ranch. Yeah. It's just mass graves. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. Crazy train. Yeah, for sure. Or maybe not that, but maybe he's really mean. Behind closed doors. And oh, you can I've, see it. Remember I, when yeah. he did his happy birthday to G? Oh, yeah. And someone What's came this? and he's like, what the fuck is this? He's like, yeah. oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody interrupted him and he about lost his marbles. Yeah. But what I find really condescending, yeah, is like, ha, 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 I'm Mr. Hashtag happy. Hashtag Mr. Yearwood. Yeah. So every, I, I took over her socials for today. Everybody's seeing her a picture of cake. Like, what? Yeah. What no. are you just, pr- stop. Stop yeah. it. People can like your music without having to think you're this guy, right? I got it. Oh, there he is. There he is. Is that supposed to happen? <gasps> Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, Look at the rage. Happy birthday. He was the about, quiet. Yeah. He was about to yeah. fucking slit somebody's yep, throat. Yeah, the quiet rage it. seething. Look at that. Is that supposed to happen? Is that supposed to happen? to <laughs> me. <laughs> Happy birthday, G. Happy birthday to G. Happy birthday to G. Do you think he sings that to himself on his birthday? Does he go through it and he's like, yeah. Happy birthday to G. He does. To me. Happy birthday to G. To G. He makes his staff do things. He makes the staff stand and like clap for him and shit when he comes in. I bet you he's got a don't look at me policy. Don't look at me. Uh, Maybe you know me as Trisha Wood's husband. (laughs) Today is the day. Celebrate. It's the Queen's birthday. The Queen's birthday. Socials asking you to post hashtag Happy Birthday Trisha. I mean, that country music world is so weird, though. Yeah. They're such fucking weirdos, man. <laughs> it is all that insincere <laughs> bullshit. Like, well, come on up. Well, y'all can stay at our house. If it, let me know if you ever need anything, which is all bullshit. Yeah, of That's course. the part of it that's just so hard to, to click with. Because they're just, none of that, I never bought into any of that. When I lived in Florida, Carolina, all that, like, but we're just real neighborly. No, you're not. You're there, are they shit. not? Because I don't know. I can't speak from experience. I don't no, know. I, feel like, I feel like a lot of people are nice. A lot of people are friendly, but p- people will overstate how uh, what they are actually willing to do and what they and uh, like what level of uh, friendly they're trying to be. And there's a lot of masking uh, real rage sure. and emotion. Sure, rage, in that. right? Yeah. You know what it is because it's unacceptable to be quote mean or angry in yeah. that culture. Yeah. So everything's kind of backhanded, like a, the bless her heart when the women exactly. are like, well, bless her heart. That's code for fuck, fuck you, you, bitch. Yeah. You know, oh, hey, hey, well, just bless her heart. Yeah. You're like, mm, that's really passive aggressive to say. By the way, on your birthday, I'm definitely going to have people uh, send photos of digital cakes and their favorite meals with this year. Send virtual shots of cakes, cupcakes, yeah. uh, your favorite meal, whatever. Just make right. sure she knows you love her, okay? She loves okay. you. I love you. She loves you. you I love you. you ding. What the fuck was that ding? What the fuck? Turn your goddamn phone off when you're recording me, you piece of shit. And you will notice that Trisha gets larger every year she's with Garth. I you're think, so mean to no, her. No, no, no. It's not the fat thing. It's that she's clearly not dealing with some feelings. And I think it's because of Garth. Garth has to be unbearable. Yeah. Just unbearable. 
Uh, it's so condescending. Like, why can't it's anyway? It's hard to be Mr. Yearwood. Mi- Mr. Yearwood. Oh, How fucking bullshit. Can I tell you too? Don't buy it. Any self respecting male. Would would you ever be like, uh, you know, I'm just Mr. Pajitsky, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hey, P. Tell see if she did a great job on her degenerates. <laughs> Make sure she knows you love her. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Tell tell him what to think, Tom. You got God. Uh, you, you know me as Mr. P. <laughs> I think he's just, and also maybe part of it is his age and not coming up in the digital. Yeah, I get that. Late. Yeah, and like and doesn't know how to make a video. No, like, partially it's that he probably has like a fucking team come in just to make that kind of shit. Oh know? yeah, yeah. Because he I like that. he doesn't understand how this is done at all. They no. should have made him watch a few people's casual videos I and mean, like you just talk to people casually. You yeah. don't have to rehearse in your head what you're gonna say. It does. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> Hashtag happy. Hashtag oh hashtag my God. tag. Hashtag, you're it, and you're like, you're like hashtag ask me anything. Hashtag good, good country music. Hashtag hashtag you're it. <laughs> Why are you it? <laughs> That's not part of the the culture at all. You're it. You're the tit tag. You're it. That's you're what the, he means. You're the tit <laughs> expert in this house. Yeah. Here's an, a question, dear mommy. Is my best friend and I on the opposite ends of the tit vagina spectrum? Okay. We need your advice on what society deems the most desirable private part disposition. She's a double D S L U T with dark brown nips, uh-huh. while my handful's tail is adorned with light pink pokers. Blessed in our fruit, however, we argue about society's nipple hierarchy. Mm. What is better, pink or brown? She also has commented on that my high and tight clamshell is more desirable than her triple layer puffy taco. I'm <laughs> home here now, Marissa. By the way, I'm home here now. A woman's email. Yes, I love it. I love it. Well, I'll tell you, coming from somebody that's had both colors, uh, pre-children, I had them pink. Now they're brown and purpley. Uh-huh. I, I, I mean, I'm not a guy, so you tell me, Tommy. I, I honestly feel like I, I kind of like them darker now because before they, I'm very pale under here, very alabaster. So to have like light pink ones, it was like I had no nips. Yeah. But now they're gigantic and they really are, they stand out because of the color difference. And I don't, I like it. I mean, I think that anybody that really, like if if a guy is really serious about their opinion on this, it's kind of, it's kind of bullshit because like, as long as there's titties that you could smack and squeeze and squish around and hit. Yeah. Staple. You can punch and slice and do whatever you want to. Right. I don't care about colors. Same thing, like, she seems to have a real nice um, poon on her, right? Uh, she's got a nice high and tight clamshell. And her friend's got a triple layer puffy taco. But my thing is, I could slide into either one, you know? Right. So, yeah, I mean, maybe hers looks more appealing. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm going to wear both like a surgeon's mask, and mm-hmm. I'm just going to finish what I finish, you know? Yeah, and I kind of wish, um, I used to have a bit about this that I stopped doing, but I kind of wish women would stop torturing themselves yeah. with weight, with looks, and with things of this nature. Like, my vagina's a little sloppier looking than I'd You're, want it to. You just tortured Trisha Yearwood on her weight, though. Yeah, but that's different. That's because I think she's in an emotional crisis. Uh-huh. I think it's about, it's not about because, the weight. Do you think because she's held hostage? Yeah, I think she fucking hates his guts and she's eating her feelings. Uh-huh. That's what I think is going on. Okay. So that's unhealthy. But right. I'm talking about the girls that are like, guys only like it when we're skinny. Guys only will like me if I'm yeah. this weight. Here's the the truth that I've learned. Yeah. There's a guy out there who's going to love whatever it is you're it's offering. True. The straight ones, the real dudes. Yeah. Don't give a fuck. Yeah, they don't care about color of nipples. Don't care. Don't care really about the appearance of your puss. Don't care. They just want to know that you're letting them in there. Right. So don't even think about this nonsense, younger girls, because guys don't care. It's very true. They just want you to love them and lick their Mm b-holes. Which I'm waiting on. Waiting on every day. Never. Never. You want to step in and see uh, your lady here, your friend, your bestie? Yeah. To my queens out there that have been cheated on by their men, it's Mm. not your fault. Stop making it your fault. To my kings out there that have been cheated on by their women, Mm. stop making it your fault. Uh Yes, women cheat too. 
Now, mm. here's the other thing. Mm. Sex is one of the strongest forces in the universe that we have to deal with. Mm. This is about self-mastery. It's not even about what's going on in the relationship. This is about self-mastery. Okay. So if you think just because somebody says they love you or you think just because they want to be in a relationship with you, that that means that that's going to dissolve all their traumas that they come with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that they're going to know how to deal with their traumas. Nah, people going to mess up. I really like that. She's so pretty. She's very pretty. Yes, yeah. my kings and my queens. So you got to find someone who's worth it. Self masturbation. Oh, what do you see as our guest here? She's talking about masturbating, Tom. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Studio G's all over the place. We got a ding. Our guest is here. Okay. Let's take a quick break. And we're back. <laughs> and we are here with our guest who is a comedian. Okay. What is a that? A star of t- multiple television shows, a writer, producer, director. I mean, rapper, she, rapper, <laughs> choreographer, film, she film star, does it all. It is Miss Whitney Cummings. What's your pronoun? <laughs> do, we, do we say comic or comedian? I would say. I still don't know. Right. Logan like, always does that. I, I like, right there. I like comic, but whenever there's a female, I like to make a big point that it's a <laughs> yeah. female, and yeah. I like to say comedian. Why don't you say lady? Like lady comic. Lady comic. Yeah, yeah. But a comedian is like what old school guys will say to make sure that make the it's distinction gender. that it's because there's female. there's two. Yeah. I'm not going to say who they rhyme with Cobb and Rom. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys in Indy, when you do their show, uh-huh. they're like, oh, very lady comedian. Oh, and it's yeah. so like, ah, oh, When dude. I first started stand up, and probably still, like, up until a couple years ago, like, when someone would, you know, at the comedy store, it's just comics yeah. bring up other comics. And then when it was my turn to go up, I'm sure this is happening. You're like, are you guys ready for a lady? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what does that even mean? And then yeah. it just cues everyone to get up to go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, God. <laughs> so fucking bad. And there's also that thing where... If you get brought up, you know, no one ever brings me up as lovely. Like, <laughs> right. You know, right. This next comedian is gorgeous. You're like, yeah. what right. does that have to do? There was, lovely lady. No. A lovely guy. He's so handsome. So and hot. Funny. There was one time Tommy and I did a gig together when we were like year seven in stand up. And we showed up together. We were both performing that night. And the booker goes to me, You're a comedian? And Tom, to his credit, Stands up for me and goes, Jesus, man, what is this, the 1950s? And you busted his balls. And I was like, wow, that was so, it happened so much to me that I was like, oh, yeah. You get desensitized to it. Like, I didn't, I was in uh, Houston. I guess this was like eight or nine years ago. It was Tom Arnold was doing stand up, I guess, at the time. And he asked me and Dalia to go with him. And we went and did, like, he hosted and we did stand up. And the booker, when I went on stage, smack my ass like, <gasps> like what? it like hurt. Chris saw it. Chris was there. He saw, it. and I started laughing because I just was like, huh. Like I didn't even know <laughs> that it's wrong. What to do? Like it was just yeah. like I don't have time to even process how yeah. screwed up this is. Yeah, like yeah. I just was like, huh. And like my butt like hurt. It was <laughs> stung. Like, yes, yeah. I had like rug burn on my butthole, so and crazy. I was like, this is insane. And then I just remembered it like a year ago, and I was like, that was fucked up. It's fucking. Weird. I know you remember in hindsight. You never. You're no so one focused. would do that that to you. No. No, no male booker would smack your ass smack as you were walking ass. on no. stage. Um, we love Chris D'Elia, by the way. The best. He was here. He's the great. You guys had your show together. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, yeah, we did a show together. Yeah, yeah. I wrote it with him in mind. This Aww. was before anything. And I just... What was that like... Um, when when so you wrote it with him in mind and yeah. then you tell NBC like yeah. this is who I want are they like what I was very manipulative about it you were because I was like I I'd never done anything before you yeah. know I was like a filthy like comic like I was gonna be like these are my demands yeah. like you know so I had to audition like three hundred guys oh or something wow. none of them were taller than me I mean it's oh right how <laughs> yeah. tall are you it's I'm five ten okay so I actually tough. got shorter recently I went to the doctor and they're like you're five eight and I was like. No, I'm fine. Like this business has just beat me. Like, I'm just <laughs> losing height. Right. Like my just my spine is. Oh, well, wait until you have a baby. How did we, your feet will grow and you'll get shorter. I, and be how great. did we? Uh, all right, we've talked about this before, and we were talking to you about show business before we ran the uh, right. hit record here. But yeah. we always felt like I'm serious. We're like Whitney Cummings really understands. Like how everything works. I know. I she told her has, she should have a really? seminar on fucking show business. I what know. Are you, you guys are the about? ones getting millions of hits on your podcast, and I'm the, yeah, but, I'm no. the Look, dickhead writing scripts and aren't getting picked come up. Come on. No. Like, you were, but you, you know were, how to do this shit early. We're talking about like early on, it was 
Yeah. Uh, you, I remember you being on roasts, and I oh, felt right. like. You going from roast to television, I gave you, I was like, this is a calculated move on Whitney's part. Really? She knows to move the chess piece <laughs> here and there and Did there. Did you? And I was like, I don't know how she knows, really? but she knows. Yeah. I, the roasts actually, I was a writer on the roasts first. I remember that. You I know? That. And they said, no, I tried to be a writer. They were like, no, I just like sent it. A, I like made them hire me. And then they booked me for one roast. It was Larry the Cable Guy. And I was like so excited. And then they said, no. Like, it's just when people say, think that I have like had a good career. Career, like they just don't know about all the fame because uh-huh. all because yeah. for every one win you get fifty sure. failures, That's but true. no one promotes no one. And there's no like you know news articles that are like so show true. not picked up. <laughs> like right. Nobody, well, can I tell you about so like I don't know when we but we I don't know we we're both kind of open micers at, around the same time. I feel Kinda. like we were. We were <laughs> I know we were just hitting every laundromat, Crazy every train. bowling. No, alley. no, 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 no. But here's the difference between Whitney Cummings and Christina P. I remember one night in Silver Lake, there was some dog shit dive bar, and it was raining. Is it Maybe. No, 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 no. It was, I don't even know if the place exists anymore. And it was an open mic Someone's night. house. Yeah, someone's <laughs> shit bar. And, uh, and it was raining. And so all that showed up were comedians. Because in LA, when it rains, the audience doesn't come out. Right. And I remember going, oh, no one's here. Later, I'm going to go get drunk and fuck around. And <laughs> she goes, no, Whitney Cummings. She's, you know, we're all like fucking late 20s. She goes, all right, well, let's workshop, guys. Come on, let's just workshop our jokes. And I was oh like, God, that's I- the difference between... Whitney and me. I'm yeah. like, I'm going to go get hammered and laid with Tommy. <laughs> I and thought then... you were going to say laid first. Yeah. Yeah. I like that it's hammered then laid. Well, hammered and then like, like I just got to get fucked up enough back then. Right. Right. I didn't <laughs> get laid sober. Don't worry. I don't even remember who they were. No, no, no. I got to get ripped before I fuck this guy. <laughs> um, but that's the difference. And I think like, that's what we all were like, damn, like she knows the I matrix. The you knew the matrix. Night. How did you know the matrix already? You I, were so young. I smart. went to um, Flappers the other night because that's where I go like try out new stuff. It's yeah. a place in Burbank and that's nobody showed too. up. It's my shit. And nobody showed up and there were like four open micros there. And I was like, can I just run these premises by you guys? <laughs> They're just like, all right. I think like I was just so afraid of being bad. I was just so mm. afraid of not being good. And I think when you come up as a female, you're already so hazed, or at least at the time, you know, there oh, weren't yeah. a lot of girls. Like, and it was like, you're, you have to, I felt like you had to be twice as funny. Sure. You know? And Still. I was also so nervous on stage when I started. Like, I didn't have that natural charisma. Like, I just, you know how sometimes, like, there's comics who can, on paper, do jokes that wouldn't necessarily make you laugh on paper, but with their charisma and with how good of a performer they are, like, I wasn't a good performer yet. So I just felt like the jokes had to be so good. Yeah. Yeah. That they had to, you know, override the fact that so I was you were a hard farmer. worker. But then also what Tommy's saying, like the business side of it, you seem yes. to know, like, oh my god, if I, I do you this, were so savvy. I also yeah. thought, I also thought, because you had, you know, so much going on. I was like, one of the things that a lot of people struggle with, and I think especially comedians, is having the audacity to say, I want this, this, yes. and this. And in my mind, you were. You knew doing that. That's so interesting because I feel like I'm always like, no, you go, you go. I'm good. Like I feel, you know, really. So I, I that was like, I mean, when I I was doing the roasts. I mean, you know, it's weird that the fact that someone gets successful off the roast because yeah. it works. Because well, they were especially back you put then it in context like that time. Yeah, that was like the biggest thing happening in comedy were the roasts. They like mattered. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even now, like they'll go like four years without one, and then all of a sudden they get huge ratings because they yeah. have it back. Like. The roasts work for Comedy Central. Yeah, um, yeah, it was like the Super Bowl. It was like yes. the, the uh, Oscars for the comedy world, yes. kind of, you know. Yes. And uh, which is tricky because it's hard. I think the part of the reason that a new person does so well is because no one's heard of them before, yeah. you know, and they just come out of nowhere and they can't really slam you on much because you don't have a. They career. don't know you. All yeah. the jokes are like, "Who the fuck are, who are you?" you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then like slut jokes, which yeah, they always do for women. Yeah, yeah totally. You're put. You're Lisa Lampanelli's pussy. Jesus <laughs> Christ! Well, it was like her. That was a black cock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which by the way, and then she's married to a white guy and everyone's like yeah. you fuck black guy she's like yeah. i'm literally yeah. like you know it's like you just grab whatever yeah, you can whatever you can right? yeah and uh and then i did a special for them and i think that's the thing and they did weren't even gonna give me an hour and i was like fought to get an hour because i didn't get but this see, is so inside see, but hour, that's though. what i'm talking about this is so that's... inside baseball but three months prior i didn't get live at gotham Wow. Which like something like 150 comics got it. But this is what I'm saying. I never got Montreal. I never, I like, I never got the things that everyone got. Mm -hmm. Like I just felt like I never could get in. So I just. No, wait, wait, wait. But then how did you know? How did you have the sense of like, 
yeah, I didn't get Gotham, but I want an hour is when I'm asking. Because like, I had like worked my, I had been getting nothing for so long that I'd accumulated so much material. I hadn't like, burned, I, an hour. I hadn't burned any of it, you yeah. know, like I had done the Tonight Show, I think, or something like when it was Leno, when he uh, like Conan got it and that so, like, but I wasn't getting for, like I wasn't getting anything. So I just had so many chunks of 15 minutes, yeah. you know, and I was doing the road. I was opening for Steve Byrne and Bobby Lee and Craig Shoemaker. Wow. I know. So I just had a bunch of material, but I just, so I felt like I'd been struggling tooth and nail. And by the time I did the NBC show, I had written two pilots that hadn't gotten picked up. Um, I had written specs for pilots that didn't even exist. Dane Cook had done a, a, a spec, or a, I'm sorry, a pilot at UPN, a network that doesn't even exist anymore. And I had written a spec. Like I was just always writing mm. sort of pilots because I was like, I don't think anyone's going to give this to me. Like yeah. I just have to create my own opportunities. And I was too weird to get cast in anything. I was always like too shrill or too tall or like I wasn't the like yeah, girlfriend. Yeah. Like I just was like, I would always get feedback that was just like, you're, I remember an agent at ICM was like, you're never going to be a leading lady. Wow. Yeah. He was like, he, well, which is interesting. Cause he was like, you're going to be like at best, like a Lisa Kudrow. And I was like, <gasps> you mean the best actress? Like yeah. you mean my hero? Like, yeah. all right. Are you the trying, funniest part of it? Are you best. trying to hurt my, fa- yeah. They, they were just like, you're too quirky. Like you're too that. So I was just like, I think I have to do this on my own. Cause no one is gonna. And your inner Jada Pinkett like came out and you were like, Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I mean, Jada, I need that. I need her. I think it's, by the way, it's so essence. great. I remember being, I was in, Mon- I was in, Melbourne, Australia, with um, Hannibal. Yeah. And we were talking. I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. My my half hour had come out. My Comedy Central half hour had come out uh, four or five months prior. Yeah. And we were talking. And I was like, yeah, so you're going to try to do the the half hour uh, on this next round? He was like, I think we're just going to go for the hour. And I was like, what? What? That's yeah. so crazy. Right. What do you mean? He was like, yeah, we're just going to go for the hour. I'm like, you can do that? And he was like, I mean, I guess we're going to try. I was like, that's that to me blew my mind. I was like, you're going to skip that part? He yeah, like, like you yeah. don't get to jump the line. It, it, yeah. Well, it was just like the kind of thing where it's like they had. And like fucking three months later. He shot her. I had, by the way, they had yeah. said no to me for so long. I didn't get premium blend. I didn't get live at Gotham. I didn't oh, get a I half never hour. Got that shit. I never I did. never got it. Never. I was driving out to Irvine, like, you know, know, putting in hair extensions in the car. I mean, I was hustling and like nothing. And I almost feel like at the time that was like my, like what you guys do. And you're like, I'm just going to take matters in my own hands. And I'm yeah. just going to shoot podcasts and I'm going to go directly to my people. Yeah. Like that. I was like, if you just give this to me, I can find my people, you know? Yeah, and I had a little sure. bit of leverage, I guess, because I had just done the roast and they wanted to kind of. Yeah. You, that, that so when you have the leverage, you got to fucking. You really got to do it when you yeah. got juice. Right? I know. Right. Yeah. You got to, you got to be with someone who. And you got to be willing to say no. Yes. Oh yeah. Which you learn for me. We say no. It takes like. That took years. So, because you're just like, oh, I just, anyone that talks to me, I just, I'm like, thank you. Thank you. You know, you know the oh. biggest, like, um, I don't know, uh, reward for me to say no to hmm. is an audition that I'm like, I don't want to fucking go out on that. <laughs> and, and no, like when good. I used to be like, I, I think I don't want to go out on it. And they're like, you should go. And I'm like, I all right, I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> and now I'm like, I don't want to read for this bullshit. <laughs> and they're like, okay. You don't even want to go for the one day. What if you get it? You have to spend eight years yeah, doing it. No, no, oh. no. You know I what I mean? Down that all the time. I didn't even want to go for 20 minutes. Yeah. Like, you know, what if I get this? What if I get this was always, That's you know what the, the thing is, I w- I'm always amazed by how many uh, agents think that what if I get it is like, why are we having that conversation? I'm like, that's the point of going. No, then they go to me. Well, because I'm like, we hey, can always say no, but that's three days of my life. Why would I do that? I have shit to do, dude. I always am like, where does this shoot? And they're like, uh, I, I could find out. I'm like, Atlanta, find out. Always find out. Oh, because no, I, I want to know if I'm moving. And then they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, it does shoot in Toronto. But like, we don't like, think you're gonna get it. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, like, why are you yeah. sending me? And on why this? would I go? You're just doing this to seem like you're doing your job. But do you know that I don't crazy. even Makes have, sense. I don't even go out on them ever. I don't even have an agent for theatrical. First of all, it's so bad. Everything you know, sucks so everything fucking Everything is bad. just going to hurt your feelings. Every time they're like, hey, God. they love you for this. It's but, between you and somebody. Yeah. No, you get the script <laughs> and it's like grandmother, <laughs> young alcoholic. Gra- yeah, you're, you're just like, like um, you're just hurting my feelings. Fucking 40. Yeah. Yeah, She's like know. fucking everyone at the funeral. Like that's what I get. And they're like, they love you for this. And I'm like, I don't even, I don't, I don't think it. this is the right direction. No, I, I want to write our own it. shit. That's why we're that's, with CBS. Yeah. It's like, I'd rather write the vehicle for us. I waited yeah. for that, for, for yes, that. Yes, that's Not right. to fucking, they're not going to, pl- I'm not the neighbor. I'm not the fucking, the fuck machine girl. Anyway, I don't I even try out. No, I get it. It's like, what's the point? And, um, you know, and it's also think about like who are the great comics yeah. that like 
they were like, oh yeah, they got cast in that thing, like Galifianakis. Oh, yeah. 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 Like that's a great example. Like he was already doing stand up, but it was something that he made his own anyway. Yeah. Todd Phillips was like, do your thing. But it's very, you're not like Jerry Seinfeld got cast in that incredible no. show and then he did his own show. Like right. that's never been anyone's trajectory. Yes, like true. Mary Lynn Ricegob did I that. Love Lynn. She's amazing. Like she did that 24 show yeah. and was like great, but made it her own special thing. Oh yeah. But I don't think anyone sort of popped off of doing someone else's thing. She works right? constantly. Mary Am I making that yeah. up? Works Am I constantly. Wrong? No, you're right. No, you're right. You have to make it your own. I Definitely. think it's like, dude, did you see their special? It was amazing. Oh, and they're on that show uh, sometimes. <laughs> dude, I got- like Pat Oswalt, who's like on other shows, but no one's like, yeah, I love him on that show. You're like, his stand-up's amazing. I yeah. had this uh, one come in not too long ago where the description was very detailed <laughs> for a nerdy computer guy. Oh, and my I was God. Like, wow. I was like, hey, man. I go, Always. don't you think, I mean, I realize Always. acting is not playing yourself, but don't you yeah. think they'll get like the nerdy computer looking guy? Yeah, they'll call Kevin Christie. Right? To, yeah. To do it. And yeah. and they're like, you should just, you should go in. And I was like, no. Because I, I know they're going to cast. <laughs> nah. Yeah, but a lot a of it is guy. like casting directors, like having been on both sides, a lot of it's casting directors like fan, they like you, they just want to see you. Yeah. Like, and then it's like, well, no, they'll cast you in something else. It's like, I don't have time to go no. on weird dates. No. I've got a lot going on. In man. Van Nuys. Oh, and also if I see in the character description, sexy. I'm like, like, uh, have you seen anything? No, I, do? I like, like, I like, like, God. I like it when they try to make it so she's not pretty in the description. <laughs> it's like not a threat, you yeah. know. It's yeah. always something that's like not going to steal your man, but like cute, uh, cute. I get like cute, hilarious. Charming. Friends with all the guys. Yeah, but it's hilarious. also I love that. Also, it's super insulting when it's like, it's like you know, Lindsay, 25, smart. It's like. You think I assumed a woman wouldn't be smart, so you oh, had to qualify. It has to be smart. Yeah. yeah, smart down to earth. It's like, you know, some women just are that. <laughs> well, that's the other thing, too, is that they really don't write. I mean, still, they still don't write us very well. So yeah. I'm like, I'd rather write my own thing and do that yeah. than wait for You know who else would, fucking, too? Huh, so girl. here's the thing. Make sure you're with someone <laughs> that is interested in mastering themselves and everything that they come with. And I know that there's a lot of pain that comes with infidelity, but relationships is a spiritual endeavor. Mm. Just make sure you're with somebody who's worth it. So you got engaged recently, and that's why we <laughs> wanted to um, bring Jada Pinkett into the mix Her here. Teeth are Can so I just nice. really quick? Sorry, I'm yeah. always t- have the wrong takeaway. Yeah, I'm always the one when you show me a photo. I'm like, what's that thing in the background? Yeah, like, of I hear, why is she wearing two different earrings? So she has oh, so she? much money. Yes, that she just like yes. I got two. I don't. I can't decide yes. which jewels to wear. She's so pretty. Why does she look? Tw- yes. She's Benjamin She's Button. Amazing. Why does she look twenty? I don't know. Yeah. It's like find someone that care. Like if I looked like you. I, I mean, wouldn't have to take your relationship no. Her advice. skin is flawless. And then you should see her mom, Gammy, yeah. on Red Table Talk. Yeah. Gammy looks better than wow. all of us. That's the bitch has nuts. a six pack. Her mom has a six pack, dude. Do a skincare video. I don't no. care. I don't need your relationship advice. Oh, she does nothing but those <laughs> videos. She hates nothing. Will. Why did so she much. bring up? Yeah, why'd she bring up infidelity? A lot. That felt like okay. That just felt like a weird, like no one was thinking about that. A lot of resentment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I did get engaged. What am I in for? It's awesome. Yeah. We've been married. Our 10-year anniversary is coming up. Yeah. November 8th. 10 years. That's 10 years. crazy. Together, but you were together 14. for like, yeah, like a bunch of years, mm-hmm. I feel like, before. I, I remember it. seeing you guys at like Jerry's Deli <laughs> in the Valley. Remember there was that, that comedy on a box? You did comedy on like a giant <laughs> box. Yeah. Like you would look down at the people eating their yeah. like salami or whatever. And I remember you guys yeah. and I'm like, oh, they're to get like comics dating. I was like, that's never going to work. <laughs> <laughs> comics dating comics. Good luck with that. I and know. here you are. Now, you did were, you get, wait, sorry. Did you ahead. marry, are you marrying a, a comedian or no. a lay person? He's not a comic. He's a lay person. Um, he's a pedestrian. Okay. I don't, I had no idea it was going to happen. I was not, he, we had we met on the internet, long distance. What? He per- you met on an app? We met on a dating app. No way. Totally. Yeah. Cool. Was it that one of like celebrities? Kind of. It's like you have to like get accepted. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a little, when it's all like Hollywood, it's all like the dudes in Hollywood I've been trying to avoid for the past 15 years. <laughs> yeah. It's like Piven, Matthew Perry. It's like, oh God, these are all the people I've been trying to avoid. I've been hearing Matthew Perry's name a lot on this. Yeah. Side. People yeah. always say he's on there. What's yeah. the, um, what's that like? What does the guy who hits up Whitney Cummings I say? Know. Well, you know what's funny is when I was on Tinder for a while too. Smash. And I and I uh because I was like, what's the difference between meeting someone at a bar? Like yeah. it's it might be safer, I can get to know them. And then one time I had this guy meet me at the comedy store. Uh, mm-hmm. Just to be like, okay, this could be dangerous. Just meet me in the comedy yeah. store. Like, what could happen? And he was gonna come see a show or whatever. And then I saw him and uh we were texting for like 
three, four weeks. He sees me and I'm like, hey. And he was like, I didn't think it was really going to be you. And I was like, what? Like, first of all, who, if someone was going to impersonate someone, why would they pick me? Like, I'm not a <laughs> like stand up comic. But also, like, wa- what were you waiting for? All, he, like, wanted to be catfished, I think. I oh, think it was ah. like, I was He's like, like, this isn't really Whitney coming. No, I'm like, so you yeah. prefer to have the person pretending? Like, he was just like, can I get a picture? Like, it was very oh, weird. And no. then he just, like, left. I thought Aww. we were, like, going on a date. So I was like, I think this is probably sketchy. Yeah. So then um, I went on this other one, which is kind of people that are sort of in our field in some way. Like, yeah. my guy works at Vice. He's not in our yeah. business, um, but we started texting. Is it Shane? It is not Shane Black. Okay. No, I would not be here. I would be in France That's on a right. boat somewhere. Um, but uh, he is super cool. He like had sort of knew about me, but wasn't. He's like, I've seen you on talk shows. He's like, I don't really because when people say like I've never heard of you, you're like, mm, mm, yeah. Okay. Why do you have to say that? Like, go out of your way to. I'm not like weird. being arrogant, but it's just sort of like you definitely went to my Instagram yeah. from this. Like, you know what I do? Isn't it weird. Have you ever have you ever met a comedian who's like a big comedian, and they're like, oh hi. Um, uh, what's up? You and Google like, me every day. And you're like, hey, man. And then <laughs> what are we doing? Like, uh, what are we doing? What are you, uh, are you a comic? And you're uh, like, come on. Of course. Get out of here. Then, Get out of here. And then they're like, uh, sorry, are you uh, opening for someone here? And you're like, Don't. nope, I'm not. And then you're like, okay. Are we like, doing this? We're on the same poster. Right. <laughs> like, Dude, you follow about? me. Like, to, like, Come on, man. But all, I, I love that. I also love the backhanded compliments you get off stage. Oh, God, we talk about this with Dalia. Like, yeah, Dalia's maniac about this, yeah, by yeah, the way. Why? He gets like, so fired up. Yeah, he gets so fired up about, about the, uh, <laughs> the, the people that give the, the backhanded Dude, problem. that's my favorite shit. Oh, yeah, we talk about it constantly. <laughs> well, him is the craziest because he's just the building is shaking. <laughs> but it's like I'll get off stage and someone's like, weird crowd. And you're like, what? Like, don't do that. It's like such a subtle oh, yes, right. yes. Like you Weird fucked crowd. Up. Yeah, yeah, like you're too smart for them. They try to give you a compliment yeah. as a way to yeah. insult you. Like, oh, uh, right, they just right. went over their heads. And you're like, but I thought I did okay. I just did great. Yeah. I, forgot, I forgot. I forgot about that one. one. I was or that, well, maybe it's this one. When you come off stage and you kill and they're like, great crowd. And you're like, no. Yeah. The crowd didn't do that work. <laughs> right. I, I fucking did, did that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, that's not great crowd. Yeah. You uh, know? So um, demeaning, diminishing. Or or when someone is not a comic, the kind of shit they were. Like, I remember one time someone came over to me after a show and they're like, I could never do that. I'm like, what? Like, it's just like a weird little, like... It doesn't seem... Yeah, I know what you're saying. It doesn't seem 100% positive. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. yeah. Like, do what? <laughs> like, it's shit joke. You yeah, should like, be like, yeah, uh, you, you wouldn't understand. Yeah, so. you wouldn't. This is it's not for so you. It's so funny. My best friend likes you. That's always weird, uh, too. My friend likes you, or not the girlfriend clearly doesn't. Yeah. Guys yeah. want to do that. Guys always want to come up to me and be like, hey, I don't know who you are, but will you just take a picture <laughs> of me for my girlfriend? And I'm like, all right, dude. I get the opposite. I get, I get the guy. <laughs> my favorite is when the guy goes, dude, picture. And I'm like, okay. And then he's like, babe. And she's like, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Why are we totally. taking pictures of some guy at the airport? I'm like, come on, man. Chicks aren't. That's yeah. so funny. I get a lot of, and I, you guys probably get this because you have a pot, like you're so known by the, your fans. Like I get a lot of people who are like, hey, my phone's charging. Could you just take a picture and email it to me? <gasps> oh my what? God. I'm like, no. what is the vibe I'm giving off? No. That you're, and then they're like, how's your knee? I'm like, what? How do you know? I think when you go on enough <laughs> podcasts, people just think you're friends. They re- Oh, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I kind of enjoy that though, because I feel like they know what they're getting when they yeah. come to a, a show. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That's right. Then the whole thing of yeah. like me them being like, "What a lady saying crazy shit!" Like, yes, bro, like yeah. you're on board. It's yeah, so totally. Much better I that feel way. like the real downside though, if I may, you to may. you being engaged, Uh-oh. is that it takes so many opportunities off the table. Mm. You've seen that a lot of uh, women keep making these videos of why they like the bad boys. Ladies, don't sell yourself short. Get yourself a man, the sexy professor, the bad boy that'll possibly just steal your heart and toy with it. Wait, see, the guy I'm looking at the photos. Have in the a back. good time with you. Um, oh, no. or just be goofy, whichever. I mean, that sconce is not my favorite. <laughs> Are you into like posters? Uh, or, uh, not yeah, from, no. <laughs> from the eighties. What? Those, what is death I don't even metal? Know what that is? I oh, V neck. Is that a rope? Yeah, it's comfortable with just being himself. There, that's true. Is Stop that a BB so swimsuit? Wait, what do you say? Stop looking so hard. Stop looking Who so hard. Who is that? Is that a famous person? No. no. Oh. There's all these like weirdos no. on Instagram that I feel like have gotten famous and I've never. Stop heard. looking so hard. We're easy to find. Oh. oh. Are those sunglasses farmer's tan? 
Yes. Does he have a, <laughs> from yes. goggles or something? I mean, you're just gonna leave that out there. I, I don't. I, I don't know what to do. See, this is why I want to get engaged again. <laughs> yeah. Like I want to get married tomorrow. You know like these, videos like that. These bad boys out there that are so hard to resist. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think my base. Mind. If that, or do we say that? I don't even know. People are talking know. your base and your brand, and I'm like, I don't know what that means. But like, I don't think that the guys that my success has been from guys that think I'm gonna date them after i don't think no yeah i wouldn't say that's what you're putting out there I don't no think. like people are like are you worried that now you're engaged you're gonna lose fans i'm like what? i don't think people what? were like no. tolerating my comedy because they thought at the end we were gonna date no. like that's not, i get like girls yeah you know? i thought so too i think like, I girls, i've seen guys like that you. really have that um worry before i've talked to guys who. Are, oh no i know i yeah. know tons of comics yeah. who like are in relationships but don't put it on their Instagram yeah. and stuff like that. But I, uh, I, I think guys, Which I'm like, I still don't. think it's weird. It's like, they're, they're not, they're, are they really going to your shows? Cause you're available. I don't think so. Don't you know, so. I think that, I think that actually, uh, uh, this isn't obviously why I did it, but I think it helps because sometimes I do make fun of guys and girls. It's like, I don't hate men. I'm not yeah. a man hater. I love men. I'm marrying one. I'm going to share a toilet with one. Like yeah. I love yeah. men. I make fun of the idiots like that fucking guy. Yeah. But I think it's, it's good to remind people like well, I'm not this bitter spinster. Who's like, well, of course Fuck men. we really no. want to make you squirm. So we brought yeah. out I'm one gonna, of our, yeah. this get is, uncomfortable. So ready to get uncomfortable. Imagine, imagine you're not engaged, right? Let's go back maybe a couple of years. You're single. Two months ago. We got okay. engaged like a month ago. But I mean, ago. let's say you're really? single. You're single. You're single okay. and you're out and you okay. have a night out. Okay. And you know, you're, you're approachable. You're a personable person. Uh, somebody comes up to you and they're like, oh, hey. Great crowd. Yeah, great crowd. <laughs> I mean, I would have yeah. laughed. Anyway, um, <laughs> and you have a little chat with them and you're like, ah, oh, blah, blah, blah. And then... For whatever reason, maybe you have a couple of drinks, you exchange information, but you don't think much of it. Okay. And the next morning, <laughs> the next morning you wake up to this. Good morning, Julia. It's me, Joe. Just wanted to say hi. Wish you a great day. Tell you that meeting you yesterday <laughs> and getting a look at you was probably one of the greatest moments of I my life. I need to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I need to take a walk. You don't know how so beautiful uncomfortable. you are to me. I mean, just you're gorgeous. Turn you're the precious. fan off. Mm-hmm. So, so but it's who? It's been sitting in my mind when you said to me you want to go back with your ex boyfriend. Please erase him from your memory. Don't mm-hmm. ever go back in the past. I know because I've been there. Have you? And I understand when you know you're trying to find somebody and go on dates, on and nothing compares to your ex. But there is that. How many Better fans do you there. have in your home? It's got a lot of fans. That's a really good point. I promise you, it is me. We, me and you. We have great ventilation in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, he brags air. about it. He brags because he actually built this whole house. He did everything. that. All the that's crazy. your opener. Right. Coming at you from the house I built. Yeah, look at that. That's high. That's, a, that's where you start. Marketing. Shows. Marketing 101. Yeah, and then I'm in. I'm like, this motherfucker can build a house? Yes. My ex is looking pretty whack right now. Yeah, right? That's lead with your strengths. What is I will this love you facial? Like you've never been loved before. Oh, but cherish didn't you. we just meet? I'll make you f- feel like a woman. A Why, woman. Ma- feel like a woman? What does that even mean? After you experience me, <laughs> you won't even know who your ex boyfriend is. Wow. So you're going to give me a lobotomy with oh, your dick? I, I, I know. I, I'm gonna, you're going to cut out. Julia. <laughs> Julia. It's so and intense. Let's get it to the whole other level here. Open up your heart <laughs> to me in your arms. No. <laughs> Let's go full throttle. <laughs> <laughs> in love with you. Is this about fucking <laughs> or love? No. Uh, he's no. just. He's obsessive. I Who think is this guy? Boundary. Just stuff. a random guy. Is that guy. Rich Voss? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this has got to be. To me, I mean, what I feel <laughs> when I watch it. I is love a Rich Voss, by the way. So is that going to get me in trouble? No, no, no. Oh, not at all. There's, there's the, the level of embarrassment I feel for him because everyone has, <sighs> has done something. To a degree, yeah, of course, that humiliating. You, like you know, where you send a text, yep. or you just, but the Mortifying. fact that he went full throttle. No, it's full he, throttle. Full throttle. But who who did he send? He sent. He this said this to a nineteen-year-old freshman in college, and he's obviously not. And uh, it, and she blasted it. She sent Hell it to her friends, yeah. and then it grew from there. 
Yeah. Julia, yeah. let's go full throttle. Yeah. But haven't you met let's guys like that? <laughs> Went anywhere. They, you know what? They're obsessive. If we all had that. No, I look at this oh. guy and I'm like, if I had that kind of confidence, yeah. I would have everything I want in life. You do. Yeah. You do, like though. That, you do have that kind of confidence. That's what I'm trying to tell what are you. You, talking? you, you wow. go full throttle all the time. You go full like, throttle. Good for, let's go full throttle. <laughs> I'm going to name my next special full throttle. Aren't you going to shoot one soon? <laughs> yeah. Are you excited? Uh, y- yes, a little bit. I'm a little bit like. You've been touring, right? Yeah, I've been touring. Like I've been doing clubs. Just yeah, to run it good. over and yeah, over. Yeah. theaters, you can't. I feel like there's this thing with comics now, like where if you're not doing theaters, like people think you're you can't do them, and you're like, well, I don't want to do clubs because everyone's gonna think I can't do theater. And no. like, why am I get no, this out of here? You gotta get the no. reps in. It's so yeah. yeah, it's just like with social media now, it's like everyone's like I find myself doing it, like comparing and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I'm just gonna do my thing. I'm gonna do clubs because that's the only way I know how to get ready for a special. That's the good. That's the good way to do it. Don't you think? Because yeah. you can do. I'm like, I want to change this, and I can do it in yeah. an hour. And where are you shooting? DC. Nice. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just there the other day checking out uh, theaters. And um, I, uh, I'm i doing it. I just, there's a little bit in my head now, and I think this is new for comics, where it's like, am I going to get fucking shit yes, for that? I know. Um, is someone going to think that's racist? People are going to think that's sexist. And I find myself like totally over. You got, you got your overthinking it. I got to get out of yeah, there. I know. Can I tell you something? I'm scared. I just did a half hour, The Degenerates, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I wanted, I had topical material on the Me Too thing, and I didn't want to wait to put it on an hour, yeah, like yeah. a year from now. Yeah. And I'm like, God, thank God I'm kind of protected by think the degenerates. Like, yeah, that's right. This is going to protect you just this much that's from the what crazy it's shit you're going to say. I find but myself I in this joke where I say like your slutty Indian costume is kind of, and I'm just like, do I have to say Native American? It's, oh my God. It's less funny. Like, yeah, it's just no. like, do I have to change that? It's just that we're in this fucking walking on eggshells and it's like comedy. Just make sure that when you Scared. get shit about slutty Indian costume that you don't <laughs> respond or engage. At all. At all. Never engage. See, that's so smart. Because yeah. I always like I have such a hard time not not Ignore getting the last it. word or just being standing yeah, up for yourself, course, you know, course. when you're getting attacked. Especially if you feel like something's really misrepresented. Yeah, you're just that's like, when you have to mi- disengage the most. Well, because comics, I think that the thing that sort of our engine is like we want to get to the truth. Like we're obsessed with justice, yeah. right? So it's like the idea of someone saying something that's not true. It's like I have such a hard time not being like. Hand- mm. But handle it the way you imagine a really, really, really famous person would handle it, which is they would not entertain They'd it. They'd have their wife do a... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to have Jay to handle Just be like, no, I'm yeah. not dealing with this. Yeah, like this, um, but I just, it's tricky because comics, like we thrive on feedback. That's how we yeah. get better. But then it's like that feedback I just have to ignore and it's just like kind of a mind fuck. So, um, so yeah, and I have some of the Me Too stuff too, but I'm like, oh, this is going to be too late. Like it's no, just kind of a... It's oh, still it's hard. The- well, I wanted to make fun of the particular people at the at the moment. Yeah. And even now I look at those jokes, I got a, f- a few Louis jokes and I was like, oh, fuck. Like, he had gone out into the clubs, and I wish I had been able to write about what he's recently been doing. Oh, shit. So, like, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's why you get to do this. Fucking you get changes. to do your jokes on your podcast yeah. or, like, the things, your thoughts, you know, because there's yeah. so much to chime in on. God you can just damn. do it now. I know. It's frustrating. I kind of, yeah. Well, anyway. Um, so, that's exciting. So, when do you shoot this? So, one? I'm shooting it in, like, three months. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's also, it's like, it's uh, the last three specials I did were... Hours used to be 45 minutes Yes With commercials Now yeah. they're 60 minutes yeah. You know So I just wanted but to But I do think that The the best formula for for doing them Yeah Is as close to On the shorter side of 60 Yep As, as you can be Good point I really feel like Good point A lot of them have fucked up With being And I fucked up I mean Because you get kind of like oh, I'll just leave it all in Yeah You know And it's like 72 minutes Yeah And, like, and you're like uh, No just save it for the tour Make that you're it doing. Yeah, yeah Do it on the it, next one Make it 58 50, Smart you know, That's like, really smart Those are the ways I think those are the best ones I think what? all of our attention spans now Are just because Way less Instagram yeah. is like a minute no. Dude the reason there yeah. even are 30 and 15 minute specials now Yeah Because the data shows them Yeah That, that people, people are tune like, out Yes so I mean that's, what, that's what people are even stuff that I love. I'm probably yeah. watching someone's hour on, on Netflix and I just don't have the time because I, I got just, a kid screaming or whatever. I'm like, yeah, oh, fuck, I want to whine, I can't. Yeah, and it's they're like, like, I'll get to it. Yeah. yeah. So it's like I'm just trying to figure out how to it's just like you guys keep saying, like, I know how to do business. It's like this business keeps changing every minute. Like mm-hmm. my last special I did HBO, I probably should have done Netflix, you know? But it was like 
HBO, like that's your dream HBO as a comic. Shit, yeah. And then I'm like, now to get on HBO, you have to put in nine passwords. Like you have to like, you know, it's like hieroglyphics. Like it's just like a whole thing. Like mm-hmm. no one can even find it, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. HBO is the mountaintop. I mean, when we were growing up, for yeah. sure. So. It was like my dream to always have an HBO special. And then Netflix was just happening. And I was like, oh, Netflix, what's that? Like the streaming thing like that mails you DVDs? I know, I know. And now I'm like, you idiot. It's this juggernaut. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking crazy. I feel like I'm always like behind on well, that. Well, this guy, by the way, the Good Morning Julia guy oh was such a hit with so our audience amazing. that they have been recording themselves doing give their me, own give versions it. of it. So give good. It. This is my give favorite it. part of our show. Make, you won't even know who your ex-boyfriend is. All right. So here is some, this is Andre who made his own. Good morning, Julia. Perfect framing. <laughs> it's me, Joe. Perfect posters. Yeah. Just want to say hi. <laughs> Wish you a great day. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you that I mean you yesterday. <laughs> And getting a look at you. I love going in the circles. That's great. One of the Perfect. greatest moments of my life. <laughs> you were so beautiful. <laughs> you don't know how beautiful you are to me. I mean, <laughs> to me. You're just gorgeous. Every people, everyone else doesn't. You're think precious. And uh, it's been sitting in my mind <laughs> when you said to me, "You want to go back with your ex-boyfriend?" <laughs> circles. Please. Erase him from your memory. <laughs> don't ever go back in the past. <laughs> I know. Because I've been there. Because I'm 59. You know, you're trying to find somebody and you go on dates. Nothing compares to your ex. <laughs> but there is a better he person out there. Jesus. And Julia, I promise you, it is me. Um, I will love you. Oh my God, his voice like is never perfect. been loved before. I will cherish you. Oh I'll make God. you feel like a woman. Ugh. A real woman. Why yeah. is that so good? Is he gross? reading and from a monitor? Me, Maybe. Yeah. After you experience me. You will never know who your ex-boyfriend is. Oh, my God. What does that even so mean? So open up your heart to me in your arms. To me? Let's go full throttle. <laughs> <laughs> A plus. Oh, man, Andre, A that's plus. great. Full throttle. A just, uh, plus, so Andre. So good. What a- does that mean? I'm, if, I'm trying to think. If you were having sex yeah. and he said to you, dead serious, I want to, uh, does that make you feel like a woman? What would you do? Uh, well, that's the thing. It's just a, it's what does a, it's that even mean? Because it's an it's an antiquated POV. It's a guy who's going like, uh, you know, uh, I'll make a lady feel like a lady because he's he's fucking. It's seventies. It's like a chivalry yes. thing. Oh, yes. oh, I'm gonna hold oh, the door. That's oh, that's even worse. Yes. I thought it was sexual. Like you're gonna. No, no, orgasm no. I'm gonna treat like you like a lady. A lady. I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna lay my coat down on a puddle of water so you don't. Get <laughs> I'm gonna your lay feet down wet. my leather bomber jacket from the uh, 80s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that though. I like chivalry. That's why I, I don't like tell But I feel like a woman. Is feel like, like a woman. I feel like a woman. I have cramps. I I feel like a woman every day. I don't want to feel any more like a woman than I do. Let's do a quick sample of what Scott did here. Morning, <laughs> the baby teeth. I just that. wanted to say, getting to meet you and spend time with you yesterday was one of the best days of my life. Genius. The baby. I, uh, I could really see myself falling in love with you with those, with those pretty eyes. You're, you're gorgeous. Uh. And uh, I built everything here in this house myself. The cabinets and, and the crown molding and the trim on the cabinets. And oh, I just want to say... Uh, you know, you, you're beautiful, and you should you should never go back with that other baby. And uh, I hope this video doesn't scare you. So, I love you, baby doll. What is that towel Mwah. on the floor? Oh my god! Also, if what would you do? Why wouldn't you just send a text saying like, "Hey, love to see you again"? Because yeah. this dude probably he probably left there. I I I kind of identify to a degree <laughs> where like I remember, you know, that dude probably hasn't at his age hasn't talked. Probably even spoken to a young, uh, a young girl. So he's like, she loves videos. She's young, and he he she probably gave him attention. You know, like in that conversation, he was like, "This is it. This is the girl." He went into like a fantasy land of this is who I'm going to marry. You know, this is my lady right here. Did you do and that he, with but, her? But like, that absolutely. No. And then and then how cute. soon? And then he went into he, he went into he laid out. He saw the like he. I'm going to send her this video. She's going to respond and like, it's going to go off. Cause he probably remembered moments when they were having a drink or sharing an Uber or whatever mm-hmm. the fuck they were doing that he was like, this is special. He started to tell himself that it was more significant. I feel like that's than what, what girls was. do. Yeah, you're right. You're it's right. what a lot teenage of girls, do. girls do. Teenage girls but do. Yeah, he 12 feels year old girls yeah. to be clear. Yeah. He feels this way for every girl that gives him attention. attention yes. That's the problem. That's that the problem. Has there's he a responded million in any way. Julius, no, I, no. I think the thing the was because our friend, no. uh, 
a f- someone who wrote into the show knows the girl that he sent it to. Got to get her on. We got to get him on. And, and, I know. And she was like, she was a University of fucking Iowa freshman. I thought you were going to say University of Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, University of Iowa a real freshman. Place? Yeah. And she, um, you know, just probably was had a couple drinks and was just talking to a guy. And he just took it to, this is my soulmate, you know. Oh, no. It was heartbreaking. Good morning, Julia. (laughs) I woke up so excited. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I changed the locks on your door. (laughs) Now I can come in and fix fix your your water heater. I can fix your septic. I can replace the sink. I love him. I'll put in beautiful marble tops. (laughs) Do whatever you want. I'm going to love you like no one's ever loved you before. Shit, man. Me. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Let's go full throttle. <laughs> fucking thing. You and me, sorry, I didn't mean to curse, but fuck, I want to fuck you pretty bad. I had a guy uh, once when I first started doing Chris. stand-up. Uh, this was an older God. comic who sat me down and pitched himself to me. And he's what? like, I can make pasta. This like, is what I, I want. Yes, th- like, it was like story. giving me like his skills. Oh, no. Like It was literally like, I have a car, I have my own house. And it was just sort of this thing of like, I date like drug addict, homeless drug addict. Like I, none of the, this is, you know, like it was the point in my life where I was dating monsters, you know, yeah. but it was just sort of this like, oh, like I guess if you're a guy, you just have to pitch your skill. Well, I think every, mm. here's the thing, I think every guy knows what's going on with that guy because oh. you, you see, you know the element of your brain that might <laughs> lead you to do something like that. Uh-huh. But 95% <laughs> of us would resist, like, you might have the thought, I met that girl, I want to send her a bit, like, and your, and your like, brain you would doing? be like, what are you out of your fucking mind? No. You so, have- yeah, then you send a text or, you know, you play out what's the way to approach this. That guy just doesn't have He doesn't have the, the ability yeah. Yeah. to stop a bad he idea. Right. Exactly. It's like an Asperger's thing where they don't read the room yeah. and he's just going to do what he wants I to do. I worked like- with a guy one time <laughs> who... He was really nice. And I could tell something was off. Like something was definitely off. And he brought up Jessica Biel one time. And he was Uh like, I love her. Uh, Like, I love her so much. And I was like, okay. And he's like, yeah, I got like, I got pictures of her all over my room. And I was like, why? He's like, I'm going to be with her. He was probably like late 20s. Oh. Um, there was a moment where people were using the secret as a way to justify being stalkers. Maybe you're right. Maybe like that. I have photos of this person everywhere because I'm trying to manifest them. This it's guy like, was no, a this real, is illegal. Yeah, this guy was a real gentle. Like if she <laughs> dies, <laughs> you're going to jail. He should. That's so funny. Your vision board. Yeah, like yeah. you, you can't mean put your stalker you board. You can't put yeah. female celebrities on yeah. your wall. He was yeah. a late twenties guy, and he was like, you know, he would go to. The, I remember he was like, I go to the beach, I, I surf. And like I just think about Jessica Biel all day. And I was like, <laughs> no, no. I go, do you really think you're going to end up with her? And he's like, I really do. Hilarious. And then I would obviously like ask about her all the time. I was like, how's uh, Jessica? He's like, yeah, you know, I I put up some new pictures of her this weekend. And I was like, no, oh, no, man. no, no, no. Yeah, no. he was really, really obsessive. With Which her. is so funny because these days to put, you'd have to print them. I mean, it's like it's not that you don't even tear them out of magazines. Like we could at least tear them out of magazines right. when we were twelve. Oh, right, yeah. right. Now you have to like print, print them out. Yeah, yeah, it's super it creepy. Was really, and here's the thing: here's what I'll we say. were working in we were working as site reps for productions, so no. we would go to a. So he's waiting to be on a movie with her. Probably. I mean, like we would have. I mean, I did. I did one of the site rep jobs with Beyonce. So, wow. I mean, any you know, she could have been at any of these things. And yeah, he was really. I rem- scary here's what like I'll say. That. Like to your, you just really made me realize something in myself that I'm deeply ashamed of, which is I think that like because when you were like these thoughts, every, whatever you're about to say, like, I love like every. Well, I have the worst one of the proposal <laughs> that I feel like only you guys are gonna understand that I feel like I have to ask you about. But like when I there is this part of your brain, I think for me, where I always think I'm in the running. Like when I saw, I don't know anything about the royal family. I don't really follow that stuff. But I saw that Meghan Markle was in. I, I didn't really know who she. I didn't really know who he. Like I, and I was like fucking bitch. 
Like, oh, I right. thought in my head, I was like, she took, and I'm like, I wasn't in the running for that. Oh, you're like, she took, she oh, took this away. She took yeah. my man. There's this little thing in your head. Yeah. That's, that's just is like, crazy as shit, Whitney. I was like, that's <laughs> a crazy <laughs> fucking thought, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm all, wait a minute. Oh, I've never done that. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Uh, I was on board. I was like, yeah. Nah. <laughs> but it's like, you know how you're just kind of like, whenever a male celebrity gets married, a little part of me is like, huh. that, that, that could have been me. Yeah. And you're like, what, what? No, it couldn't have. I wasn't in the running. Hilarious. Like, was this Disney movies? Like, something got in my head that that was your man that made me like compete who was your man wait who did you who were you bummed out that got married prince well oh. when prince is it i don't even know his name harry, harry. 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 the uh, new one the i just ginger what like i saw all these photos of them when i first saw it and they were like they're engaged and i was like oh, fucking bitch i know like she took that <laughs> yeah but no, what a horrible it. gig to be i would the, never i would a, never want to have that job pantyhose all day oh my god you're not allowed to wear, eat sushi it shit. sounds like a nightmare you can't eat sushi is that real you can't eat sushi you can't have dark nail polish which of wait, course we're wearing the exact know, same now like wait why can't you eat sushi because something about mercury or like poison like fish poisoning because they're People are probably always trying to poison them or something. I don't know. Oh, interesting. I saw some article that was like, what Meghan Markle can't do anymore. Really? What else? Tell me the other one. She has to wear pantyhose. She's not allowed to wear dark nail polish. She's not allowed to eat fish. Or maybe it's just the queen doesn't like fish. It's something. She's not allowed to have her own cell phone. She's not allowed to have social media. I was like, I can never do this. She um, can't have her own phone. I don't think so. Well, that's like a security thing, yeah, I guess. Yeah, no way. Which, that kind of makes sense. They had to... They had to um, I don't like, understand. They had to end a trip a she was on because so many people came out of their... She was abroad somewhere, in, okay. I think, in Asia, and people just came out of their homes and businesses and swarmed this Aww. area, so they had to, like... What a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nightmare. That happened that at my is. dad's funeral. I mean, not like that. I'm not... I was at my dad's funeral, and I guess some people had known my dad was going to die, and, like, a couple people showed up to take pictures, and I did it, of course. Uh, mm. But it was just... I, I wasn't, like... It, it was actually kind of nice because it was a little bit of a distraction. Yeah. I was like, great, let's, like, take... Fun. Your dad's funeral? <laughs> <laughs> Nashville filter. Um, yeah, like it's oh. just like it was like on Facebook or something, and oh. you're like, people, like, what are you doing? I'm sorry, That's was gross. that recent? It's like I'm not, like, uh, yeah, like a year and a half ago. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But when, oh, but when he proposed, what was your first thought? Uh, okay, so yeah, he he goes, come over here, and I go, I don't want to smell your fart. That was my first thought because he always used to fart and then pull me into the <laughs> fart like cloud. Always you still do. Fart. So you, I thought you were tricking me. The fart cloud. Yeah, I no. thought he was tricking me. So when he first did it, by the I way, was he like, was. Yeah, I was <laughs> to like, be clear, he tricked me. No, I like you know you go like, oh my god, are you serious? Like, do you mean it? Like you're like, oh wow, that's great. Right? Wait, Something but he like just that. did it. Like, where was it? In our apartment. In our apartment. Out of just out of nowhere. I, yes. But we were coming back from Irvine. We had done a show, I and know. what I know. made you choose? I'll this? tell you why. Okay. So I bought <laughs> this ring. He's like, I know. He gets right. He gets dragged through the ringer on. I this bought house. the ring. Oh, then I won't. No, that's no, all right. That's okay. I bought the ring. I was going to do it. I bought it. Let's say in September. Yeah. I was going to do it New Year's. We we're going to do it this vacation in the Keys. And I was like, that's what Perfect. I'm doing. Perfect. I know. It was burning a hole in my pocket. I was thinking about it all the time. So I, my dude, was like having. Get, proposing is actually cool because you feel like an action hero all the time because you're always like trying to hide yes. a diamond. You're like a jewel <laughs> He's thief. right. He's oh, that's right. funny. And he, and when I asked him, I was like, well, where did you have it the whole time? It like totally like ruined the moment because he was like, oh, I just kept it in the washing machine because I knew you'd never look there. Ah. I was like, fuck you. Yeah. That's really funny. Aww. So he just hid it like where cleaning supplies are. Hilarious. <laughs> but was, so you just yeah. you just had it on your person. Dude, and I would like, I would look for it all the time. And, like, just like. Uh, just do that. I'll tap my dressed. legs. And I took it to like the show because I was like, I didn't want to leave it. And then you have to fly, fly with it because you had to fly to the Keys yes. with it. And I was always, I was like, there's no way I'll be able to hold on another six, eight weeks uh, no. to do this. No. And or she find it and pretend she did. Where I was like, I just, you know, I'm just going to do it right now. I didn't, that wasn't a plan. It was obviously like just, you know. I did pretty well tonight. I feel yeah. like. Wait, <laughs> it was October 8th we got engaged? No, it was November. <laughs> November 8th. 7th. 7th. Then oh. And then we got married November. Right, right. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. It's been a while. Um, look, Whitney's got wonderful, beautiful, radiant teeth. Let's yeah, talk about them. You really do. Hold on. We always are fascinated by teeth. And mm-hmm. stuff. you have Oh, my great God. Teeth. I have big teeth. Perfect, they're, though. They're no, they're That's gorgeous. Nice. Let's Is talk that about like it. all yeah. kinds of uh, braces and everything? I had clear braces. I begged my uncle or whoever was paying for my braces. So don't ask about my childhood. And uh, whatever, like, stranger like, that was donating to the Kickstarter that was my teeth as a kid. I wanted clear braces because I did remember the clear yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah. That must have been. Wait, now, when we were kids. Were those way more expensive? They were way more expensive, and they didn't work. 
Oh, what? great. Yeah, they were way more expensive. And they were actually, because they they were, you had to adjust them too much. Or I don't remember what it was, but they were less, oh, they said you have to wear them twice as long. And I was like, fine. Oh, you know, really? I just like, because my last name was Cummings and I already got bullied enough. Oh, yeah. So I was just like, I can't add any more jokes to totes, my face. Totes. So I was already cum shot and cum in your mouth. I mean, like at seven, you know, yeah. before I even knew what it was. Like, and uh, so I was like, I need the clear braces. It takes twice as long and they turn whatever color food you're eating. So there's no such thing as clear braces. I know, I know. So then they were just like, yell, yeah, they're disgusting. They just collect food from what it's I remember. It's gross. So they didn't really take and I no. like pulled them off. I remember one night because I was like so embarrassed. And then now I do the Invisalign thing. You oh, do so you do it now? I have it, yeah. I'm not wearing it right now, but I do it like erratically. I always lose them. You like, have good teeth. That's really very nice. Not. Thank you. They're really um, sensitive teeth. Like do I, you I, zoom and stuff? Like do you do white I do. No, I don't do the whitening, but really? I can't drink cold water. I can't have ice, so I have to use like some special toothpaste. It's really Sensodyne? embarrassing. Yes. Yeah, I Are they a too. If they're a sponsor, no. yes. No, no. <laughs> no. If not, do fuck you, them. Do you, wait a minute though. Um, are do, you, I do bet you, you, you do a lot of... Care though, right? To my floss. Teeth. Yeah. I, you know what? I try. Try. I try. try. You, you got to floss. You come across as having impeccable dental hygiene. Really? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Since weed's been legal, it, I'm slipping. Really? <laughs> I started getting this because I used to take Lunesta and all that shit, and now I just do like the vape before I go to bed, and I wake up like fully clothed, and I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> so it's like all my night hygiene's been kind of slipping, but I try to do the little flosser things. On Sorry, the road. refresh. You do whitening strips, like the crest ones, or do you do a dental whitening professional? No, I don't do. I done whitening ever uh-uh. your teeth are very really? white That's so are yours. Well, i do it i have white professional whitening i go every few years i have a fresh and fresh oh shit i yeah. have to do that no you they're don't they're starting to get kind of yellow they're getting a little janky very lucky thank you and they do what they do is they uh when invisalign they have to file them to get more space in between them uh-huh. so when you don't use invisalign then you just have like weird holes so i'm just like I need to be better about the Invisalign. I just lose it. Like, we travel so much. I lose my tray. Oh, my God. I know what I wanted to ask you. Uh-oh. I follow you on Instagram. Uh-oh. And I've noticed that you're very uh, into your skincare regimen, regime. I guess regimen. I am. Is that the word regimen or regime? It's regime. Regime? I, th- I think regime is like you, you're a king. You yeah. leader yeah. for a regime. But I might have a skincare <laughs> regime at some point you if are, comedy doesn't work out. No, but you're very really nice. disciplined and you oh, that's really nice. you do what you're supposed to do. Have you read day. my comments? <laughs> no. I'm in a constant state of fear of aging. So I'm just constantly just putting shit oh, on my oh, face. Oh, is that? Yeah. I don't have television came in and really fucked things up. I mean, yeah. I'd have television picks up more than the human eye picks up. Yeah. I remember one time I was shooting a show. We had an actress, the most beautiful, girl, gorgeous, stunning, Irish, um, really pale skin, stunning, gets in hair and makeup, goes on camera. All of a sudden, her face is covered in freckles. Oh, I'm like, What's oh the camera. Yeah, camera it was just it like it, the human eye can't pick it up. And she just had little freckles everywhere. And was, wow. No, and like, she, I don't think she even knew it. Man, it's I, a magnifying glass. So we had to fix it in post-production so she never saw it. But when so she funny. reminds me to, uh, she's like, do you ever wash your face? And I'm like, oh, oh. She never. I have this whole thing with my guy right now. Well, beards are a whole thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Smell. Is that he get? it's like they get the, fo- they do smell. It's always like chowder. It's so gross. Yeah, yeah. But they get, the follicles get all yep. clogged and you have to get in there and wash them. But he got a little thing that like cleans it. It's like a prescription. Yeah. But you got to wash your face. I know. And on the road is just like tricky because you're with all this shitty water in different cities. So do like, you do you take your whole skincare thing like on the road? Because I know you have a goat. You do the roller. I do the, well, do well the it's roller. also tricky because I just do it on Instagram. I feel like when pe- when you do something on Instagram, people so assume funny. you do it constantly. I'm like, oh, no, I, I thought you I did. I pretty much only do it when I'm filming. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, okay. Because yeah. I'm like, damn, she's so disciplined. Like, pe- no, I don't routine. do it every night. But I try to do that. look Because I don't like, look, look at all the famous female comics. Have any not gotten crazy work yeah in their- you kind of have to at some yeah. point i'm worried even richard jenny was starting to do like i'm concerned what's his name uh yeah i know who you're thinking uh, i know who you're talking yeah, about vegas has a 16 year old girlfriend N- no no <laughs> i was thinking of uh vegas no i was thinking of actually who passed oh. away um oh you weren't even thinking of vegas. No, i was thinking of guy uh uh shandling he had Ooh. Yeah. So it's like, what? What? Is, I don't know what that is. Maybe the same thing that makes us comics and want to go make strangers laugh is the same thing that makes us dysmorphic. I or think I'm embracing uh, aging and and like people like people all the time hit me up and they're like, but you can have a beard. We can't. Yeah, I know. I I know. I but I get they're like, um, 
you know, you look like someone's creepy uncle. You just shave your head. Your, you know, your head, your bald. Just Can I say annoying. something about that? Yeah. That's m- maybe helpful, maybe not. I think with comics, people try to be funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's like it's not an insult they would say if you weren't a comic. They're just kind of trying to like forge a bond with you. Like I have people come up to me in airports all the time and they say shit that's so mean. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's just like, oh, you were on the roast. Like, yeah, I'm roasting like, what up, you. Oh, and you're like, it's right. Tuesday what at a noon. Yeah. People call you cunt. Yeah, in the airport you all, the cunt. all the time. All the time. You know what I mean? So, so I'm just funny. like, what is happening? <laughs> um, so yeah, so I think it's just like, I just want to get ahead of it. <laughs> don't cunt. Don't I just want to get ahead of it because I don't want to like go into that wormhole yeah no but i feel like unless you're 20 years old you're yeah. always gonna look old it's like dude yeah. i'm not like i'm not trying to fool nobody yeah you, guys, you like, look great and thank you're just you. you look you guys it took look, long enough for you to say no that. you look amazing you yeah. look amazing and you guys look you look of course she does you guys look great I and age you. appropriate it'll be nuts yeah, that's what you that's want i thing. don't want to look younger yeah. i just want to look the age i am but i think that what we do is so aging yeah. like we're out till yeah. one in the morning it's true we work during the day also because it's like comedy it used to be you just do stand up at night now it's during the day of you're course. doing podcasts you're writing stuff that's so true so we have full-time jobs and then we go out till two in the morning and then yeah. we're on flights i'm just i've been dehydrated since 2004 <laughs> like yeah. i am just like so i just think the stress of what we do is For i just sure. try to get ahead of it the hours we, too terrible. we like to terrible. share Shame a lot of inappropriate behavior in public. Love it. And I love that. Yeah, this part of one, your special. I cannot <laughs> believe came in because people send us videos of people like clipping their toenails. On and, planes? I've seen it. On planes at the gate? I saw this motherfucker. Uh-uh. I got on a plane recently. You know, it's like we've all worked really hard to be able to fly first class. Yeah. Like we worked, I mean, I remember days where I was doing 80 cities a year sitting in the back row in the middle of course. by the shitter. Like we've done 6 a.m. Yeah. flight, dude. So yeah, so yeah. yeah. So when I like t- take a photo on Instagram someone's like, oh, first class. Like I'm just like, fuck you, dude. First of all, this is miles Yeah. because we travel so much and like I've worked my ass and I, the venue pays for it. Like yeah, don't do this. Yeah, that. This Jesus. bitch gets on the plane with a bag of hard-boiled eggs. Yeah, I've Ugh. seen that. I've seen that before too. I just went no. I've seen. I was that. like, get to the back. I full on had to have a conversation. Was she in first class? Yes, sitting right next mm-hmm. to me. And I was, uh. I was going to Fort Lauderdale, I think. And I was like, That's I literally said, I said to this woman, yeah, by or Palm Beach or something. And I was just like, I've worked too hard. <laughs> Like yeah. 6 a.m. I was just, Horrible eggs. I've worked too hard. I've seen it. I've what? seen somebody with a bag, the Ziploc, nope. gallon bag, and She's then cracking pulling them. It, pulling them. Five of them in a bag. I know. The smell. No. The smell. It smells like no. farts. You can, it's just, it's so fucking rude. Look at This, this is going to blow though. your mind. Uh-huh. Ready? Julia. Julia. <laughs> No. Well, for our audience that's listening, no. just, uh, there's no way to describe. This is a man who appears to be in a grocery store. He is in a grocery store. He's at the hot food counter. Never and he's using the ladle to serve soup. He is drinking from it. No. And he drinking. looks like he looks like a well put together guy. That's the thing. I mean, that's he looks like he those are Yeezys. Doctor. Those are fancy shoes. I yeah, feel like. I mean, the, yeah, and he's got like a nice. But he's also sweater holding on. a bag of buns. This is yeah. a bag of bread. What but is that? He's shopping. It also think? looks like nobody's. In, it looks oh, like. I mean, he is. By drinking. the way, if no one was in a grocery store, would we all do that? We're is he just doing to. what we no, all wish we could do? No, I mean, I no. wish I could. But I the eat grapes fucking... in the in the grocery store straight up. I eat grapes. Yeah, but you buy them, right? Like you put them in your separate container and then eat them out of your bag. Yeah, you're right. And then I, yeah, that's fine. You're gonna pay for those, but this that's a public suit. That's insane. That is that is Can a I, mental illness. You know what I started doing when I got pregnant the second time? I used to eat at Gelson's at the salad bar. Yeah, me too. And then when I got preggers, I was like. You know what? This is a bacteria thing. It it's is not safe. Well, did you see the um, Wild Wild Country? That's how they poisoned everybody. No. Is they just put um, uh, salmonella in the salad bars? Yeah. In that. See, and I intuitively was like, "This will hurt my child." So <laughs> I stopped it's eating. Not safe. And I no, love the a friend of mine had bar. cancer, and when he was going through chemo, they were like, "No salad Don't, bars. Yeah. Your immune no system is not salad. capable." Wow. Yeah, and I love at the end of salad bars, there's always like chocolate pudding. You're like, mm, yeah. "I'll do it." All right. <laughs> Um, we've been really obsessed with Garth Brooks and his um, social media. Random? Is it it's, great? It's, it's so amazing. But cool stuff, slick stuff, neat stuff. That's him. But uh, it just came to our attention because we've been so obsessed with his videos that another man is looking to take the title of most awkward social media really? guy. Really? Yeah. It is the founder and CEO of Facebook, <laughs> yes. Mark Zuckerberg. So. Really? Oh. You guys are, are eating brisket and ribs tonight. Brisket 
and and ribs. They taste doubly better when um, when you hunted the animal yourself. So, what are, what are you guys making for dinner? <laughs> brisket and ribs, I hope. Delicious brisket and rib. Ribs <laughs> and the brisket need to be eaten. I want to try your brisket. I want to try my brisket. <laughs> It's a pretty tough cut of meat. Ribs and the brisket. Are you excited to have a rib tonight? I want my baby back, baby back ribs. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. There is the (laughs) third richest guy in the world. (laughs) First of all, is that his house? I don't know. I I hope that's his house. You know what he did? That is a very expensive grill, that egg grill. Those are good. Those are good. The, uh, the... It's Mark Zuckerberg for those of you who Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg was worth like $30 billion. Dude, why are you even doing videos? I know. First of all. Probably By the way, why aren't you apologizing to us? First of all, I know. I'm sure someone at Facebook was like, "You, you should do this. It, it'll make you look human." Yeah, that's right. We have and to humanize you and make yeah. you not look like a diabolical. Well, that's what they said to Garth Brooks. They go, "You need to do social media," and Garth was reluctant. And then that's what happens when they don't yeah. want to do it, and they're automatons inside. They're dead inside, and yeah. they want to be relatable, and they're not relatable. Did what? Did he say it tastes better when you kill it yourself? Yeah, Does it, he hunt? Was that what he was I doing? I doubt it. He's, He's trying to get Rogan's crowd. Yeah, I think yeah. so. He's, He's like trying so. to tap in, or somebody wrote that to him and he was like reading a comic it looks like he's reading comics oh it's like an Instagram yeah. live oh. he was like I own this app I should see how it works I love you the know? idea that we can use him as a puppet and just comment on his lives and he'll do whatever we say and he thought it was really really funny like someone went baby back ribs baby back yeah <laughs> he was like check this shit out <laughs> <laughs> which is that same Garth weird humor wow. response where they're like they have like like sixty year old dad humor, you know? No, like, he's such a look boy. what somebody wrote here, man. Like he, he, uh, <laughs> I want my baby back, baby back ribs. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, okay. See, that's how buddy, I am though. Buddy. I have to admit, I'm not late. That with with um, I get excited. Instagram yeah. lives. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know. It's so exciting when you're first seeing it, but to them I'm like, I don't do a lot of Instagram lives for that oh, reason. Because yeah. I just I just repeat the comments. I know, me too. Like, I'm terrible. That's yeah. why I don't do it. I don't really know how I'm supposed to do that. That's yeah. it's endearing. I haven't seen Garth Brooks. Have you seen James Brolin's? No. Uh, yeah. He. Have you seen how he um, he posted one of just his bare ass and cowboy boots? Yeah. Like, mate, like good for him. Yeah, he goes for it. Yeah. Yeah. And he looks I like he, he really seems right like now. he's he's living his best life. I think a lot of people <sighs> don't quite know that it that it goes to everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of people. I used to think this. Like, Let's go to my friends. That's what you yeah. just think it's like a mass text to your friends, <laughs> and then you realize like no like. News reporters follow you, <laughs> like journalists follow true. you. You That's know, um, yeah. I was gonna put, I was gonna do an Instagram live after. That. That's what's so messed up. When my guy proposed, I literally was like, "How are we gonna get a picture of it?" Like, I first, my first thought was like, "Is there a picture? How am I gonna get a picture?" And my second thought was, "Say no as a joke." Oh, oh no. no! I can't believe you're having this reaction. Because I, like, I was like, oh my god, the fact that another comment. Because I was like, just say no. It just go, and then be like, yes, of course. Oh. And then I was like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And I like froze. Like you know how like computers yeah. like rebuffering stream. Yeah, I was like, don't, 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 no. don't joke. And then I was crying and I couldn't. Yeah. But in my brain, I said, to, you know, I was like, oh, should I have done that? And I asked him. I was like, would that have been funny? And he was like. I would have doubted this forever if you had done that, you monster. No, you have to have a real moment. I know. It's just this comedy programming. I was just like, oh, I should like make a joke out of it. And then I was like, there's something wrong with this. Like social media and all have like totally toxified my brain. Yeah. No. You know, it's interesting. Tommy and I together, we have our fun. Like I think behind closed doors, we're pretty much the same people. Yeah. But we don't joke a lot. Right, Tommy? Really? Like we're fucking boring. We joke. (laughs) Usually. But yeah, we joke. Yeah, we I mean, do actually. Yeah, no, we joke a good bit actually. But I don't know. I wouldn't say it there. Do you ever feel like? <laughs> do you ever like? Like I find this now with social media because there's just this like um, pressure to constantly be posting and like. Con- do you, are you ever like? Oh, we have to do a thing. Let's just film this. No, you you never feel like I out ref- of obligation. Uh, honestly, I refrain a lot from social media when I when I got shit to say, I ain't gonna say it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, totally, I don't yeah. fucking care. It's not interesting to me. Yeah, but I know when I because I'm obsessed with Instagram. I actually really enjoy other people's. Yeah, friends. yeah. And you find that it's just the same shit over and over. Like totally. Here's the dog in me. Here's the f- sandwich. Here's the thing I You're do. You're literally talking about my feed. <laughs> right, but it's everybody's feed. Yeah, totally. So I'm like, I'm just looking at the same shit every day. Yeah. But I still like it. I don't want to just do another thing. 
thing that other people have to stare at that they've already but, seen. Which in turn should that should be the argument for me doing it more because I'm like, oh, that must mean other people enjoy the banal That's sort right. of minutiae. Or they don't. They're just going, oh, idiot, idiot, idiot. Yeah, you well, know, that too. and yeah, then you're that like, too. I'm gonna be another. I just it's like so this social media like this is the part of the business that I haven't wrapped my head around because it's such a big tool and I'm so like "Mm." no you're great at it I think you should give yourself credit because you're very vulnerable and I would say that is so hard to do on Instagram and brave and great and it's it's worked for you I think you've you've done it really well that's really nice I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing it's like I feel I don't know it doesn't um, but there's some people that I feel like do it well you know, and I'm just like, I mean, just the Garth Brooks talking into a thing. It's just like, what are your Garth Brooks? Like, what? It's weird. Do they yeah. have to do it or do they want to do it? That's always my so question. I think someone's telling them that you, you should be doing this. You should be on social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he I had to, you need to digital. connect with your fans. Yeah. 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 I had that conversation with Demetri Martin the other day because he's just like, ah, I don't know how to do this. And I'm like, dude, you're perfect for social yeah, media. Yeah. Do these one liners. Just fill it. It's he was, great. He was just like, I don't want to be like, hey, guys. I'm like, you don't ha- just do it your way. Do what Garth does. They let the conversation begin. Yeah. yeah. Slick stuff. It's really weird. Is he touring or it's just for him? He, no, he's touring. He's touring. The yeah. big ass the arena big ass tour. Stadium he's, tour. He's stadium tour. Sorry. He's Garth Brooks. Dude. I know. I know. He's I know. Garth Brooks. It's crazy. You know who's not Garth Brooks? Who? This guy. <laughs> hey, there he is. The little dick faggot. <laughs> he got a little fucking teeny dick, huh? Yeah, I bet you do. I bet you do, you know. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your dick's so little. That no wonder you're fucking gay. That's because you can't please a fucking woman, isn't that right? <laughs> Some women have Your small dick's vagina. so little, you decided to be a fucking faggot because you can't please a woman. And I'm sure you've heard, oh, is it in yet? <laughs> That's because they can't fucking feel it. They can't feel your dick because you're such a fucking loser. <laughs> you're such a little fucking little dick. You know what's crazy? Hmm. He got paid to do this. There's one thing that's crazy about this? Somebody (laughs) paid him to do this. Who? Uh, a man. The Phillies? I bet they love this press. <laughs> I bet they're uh, psyched that this is their new ad. This guy <laughs> is uh, is paid to humiliate. So you you hit him up on Skype. Oh my god! And, and you have to pay him, and he humiliates you. Is it you. like part? Is it like a serv? It's like a sexual? Like it's a, a fetish? Because yeah. I know I'm really into dominatrixes. Really? Me too. I'm super. Into I feel it. like I could do it. I feel like I could do. You'd be fetish. great at it. You'd be great at so it. So would you thing. though? No, I'd be like, I'm sorry. No, I'd be like, this is a thing. It's obviously a trauma happened to you. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, work right. Yeah, yeah, I'd be like, this is a maladaptive response. See? I, here's it's what I would do. It, master humi- humiliator, humiliator on the number Skype. Eight. But there's something, um, I, I, I'd be like, hey, can we work on the lighting? Like, I would just The lighting is terrible. It's really terrible. horrific. Which is why he's perfect for this and podcast. And how much money is it? How much? <laughs> I don't know. Everyone has their own rates, and, you know, we don't want to get into their personal business. But yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what he charges, but I'd be interested. What in would you? Up. You could do this. Here's what you I would do. You could totally no. do this. Here's what I would do if I weren't married with uh, and a mom. I would do fart videos because that's just easy money. But it's just your butt. Farting. Easy money. Have you yeah. seen not the girl face. that sits on cakes? Of course. Yeah. Hello. We could do that. I could uh, do that. I could do fart and I could kick guys in the nuts. No problem. No you problem. couldn't. No problem. I would, I would do it for but free. But what's the, di- how I, I've always, I'm sorry. I don't know the answer to this. 36 years old. How do you kick someone in the nuts, but not the dick? How do you, you have to hold practice. No, yeah, about practice. <laughs> no, those nuts will usually like the way that they hang. Yeah. If you kick, you're going to kick the balls. Does the dick, it, when people, does your dick hurt when it gets kicked also? Not really. It's just the nuts part. Really? Yeah. Your dick doesn't hurt? I mean, if you weird? get kicked in the dick, it's very the way that they lay together, your balls are much more sensitive. Sure. And if you get hit in the balls, you feel it up inside of your, you know, right. yeah. your your abdominal area and it fucking really hurts. But your dick only hurt like I feel like during sex if it jams, that's the thing that hurts the dick. Yeah. Right? If right. it jams, what do you mean like the balls it, jam up? No, the dick. Like oh, if you oh. miss, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, and you, yeah. you can break it. You can yeah, break, you can a, break dick. a dick. You Tommy can break a dick. Tommy Lee's had his dick broken. Really? Yeah, he's talked about it on Stern like a million years ago. Oh, that's a bummer. I know. Yeah, Dennis not... Rodman talked about that. Oh, Rodman got it's his cartilage? dick broken. Is it cartilage? Yeah. Yeah, well, there's, 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 blood, there's blood vessels that uh-huh. can pop. And well, that's not great. It's not mm-hmm. good. I don't think I could fart. I don't think I could fart in front. Do you not oh. fart in front of your fiance? We don't fart, no. no. Well, you got to change that right quick. We you got fart. a whole lifetime of Isn't holding in weird? farts. 
But I, what about when Brown? did you get? When was the first time you guys Stop farted? It. Stop it! One month into it, he put my hand in his crotch and he farted on my hand. <laughs> How does my asshole smell, huh? That's a month in, Whitney. This is disgusting. Like, our whole life is disgusting. I, I don't think farting is I think it's funny. I would love I to love do it, it with him. We just don't. He's done it in front of me, but I try to not do it. You got to cross that barrier you at the gotta right You got to do it. Yeah. You got to do it. Otherwise, it's a lifetime of holding I it I remember in. Howard was saying the key to his relationship is they have separate bathrooms. I know. He doesn't like it when Beth... No, they've ne- yeah, they've never talks about pooting. No, so but, but she's what like about an angel? Like no, she's, she's like a cherubic amazing, sure. angel. <laughs> like, I follow her on Instagram. We'll talk kid, about yeah, this yeah. off mic. But the thing is, but what about when you have to brown? Do you announce it? What do you well, do yeah. when you're hanging out and you got to go take a brown? I just pretend I'm. I'm yeah. just. I pretend I'm doing something else and I spray yeah. perfume around the bathroom and what? I turn the faucet on. Yeah, I just yeah. pretend. Like but in his mind, I've never. Okay, yeah. No. But but wait, wait, wait. But what if it's a hot brown? What if it's a sick brown? Like a what diarrhea? Like you've got diarrhea. Yeah, I just and, I, and then I, you go I, a few times. I tell him like, oh, I gotta go get dry cleaning, and I go do it at Starbucks. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just go somewhere and do it you somewhere. Go else. somewhere sometimes. Else? Yeah, or I'll just be like, hey, I have to make this call. I'll just lie. Yeah. I mean, I feel like a good relationship. Gotta, built on just lies, right? Yeah, I gotta healthy. do some work. Yeah, I'm like, I gotta go do this call real quick. Are you gonna be in here for a minute? All right, I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna go take a bath. That's a big one. And I just turn on the bath water. Seriously. And just like wet my, I'm like, yep, just took a bath. Plus, since he's not in your business, he doesn't Damn. know. You could be like, I gotta do this. Uh, yeah, like, I'm like, I have to do this. I have to call him to, to talk Tom's to the, podcast. I have to talk to the president of comedy right now. <laughs> You know? The president of show business is yeah. called. So, but he then you discuss. must have your, you must have a few bathrooms in your house. I'm hoping that like a safe haven. That I you do. Can go my to. bathroom is okay. like a, because it's also like I feel like I got this thing in my head a couple of years ago where people used to say like, oh yeah, with the stuff you talk about in your special, it's just like a deterrent to guys. So in my head, I was like, okay, in my personal life, I have to like overcorrect mm. and not do anything polarizing or whatever. Right. Because in my standup, I'm like talking about squirting, yeah, and, you know, yeah, all that yeah. kind of stuff. So it's like, oh, okay, like in my personal life, I should probably tone it down, which might not be true, but it's like a narrative I have in my head. You know what's so interesting? I was just telling Tom about how liberating it must be when you no longer have to be sexually viable to men. Like imagine how much funnier relief. you're going to be like both of us when we're like totally Fuck barren it. postmenopausal. Oh, can't wait. Just yeah. shoplifting. <laughs> yeah. Like fucking what? What just are you going to do? Sweats everywhere. Yeah, I'll constantly. Short hair. I, I feel like the reason him and I, the reason I wanted to be with him, like I feel like I can just be garbage around him. She's basically saying when you're this lady, okay? Twenty-five residential. Got it? Hey, fuck you, both of you. Twenty-five. Twenty-five residential. Fuck you both. What does that mean? That's fuck life. off, both of you. Fuck you. Got it? Go. Hey, babes. <laughs> fuck go, you. Go. Got it? Fuck you. Love her. Yeah. Love her. I know. That's uh, what I'm I like. Be. Four months away from that shit. <laughs> Love that. Love her. Yep. That's Slow str- down. Straight. Slow straight. Yeah. Down. Married to a man. <laughs> What's 20? Oh, 25 is the speed yeah, limit. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. that was just kind of her, like, no, been here 25 years. Love her, the fucking dog, the whole deal. That's yeah. going to be me. You know what's yeah. hilarious? The fact that you Why get off, out of breath? On me abusing you. Oh. The fact that you're a little fucking little faggot dick. I've seen bigger belly buttons than your dick. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get the FGT I love that memo. he, does, I love that he doesn't write it out first. He's kind of just improvising. If I, this was my job, means. I'd write the insults out oh, first. Oh, I think so. Yeah, I'd Just like, do a, like a pass? Yeah, I just like put effort punch in it. Like, you're like a freaking... Fuck you. Like, he's like coming up with it. Like, prepare for your job. All right. See how overprepared I love it when he's still a workaholic when it comes. Yeah, like, a perfectionist, right. like, even in the impromptu insults. She's I'm like, like you I would have, have them in my pocket. You didn't have someone punch this up first? Yeah. yeah it's like too business <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's like, let's make a business out of this. Let's give you some money. It. This could be a thing. Um, so I love it. Just so people... Can uh, where where are you going to be? Oh, uh, on oh gosh, um, I'm doing. I'm going to Nashville. I'm going to Salt Lake City. I'm going to Raleigh. I'm doing the whole deal. You're doing a cool. bunch of places. Yeah, I'm trying to go to non LA, New York. I'm trying to go everywhere. That's I feel where like you sometimes go. comics, it's like when you work on a special, you can't just go to the, you know, places. You know, I you said flappers. I just did Love two it. Sunday nights at the YooHoo room in a row. My favorite. And yeah, the reason being, yes. you've got mall people. These are valley. That's right. Normal fucking yep. people. People who like chain restaurants, yeah, <laughs> if, they, if they laugh, you know you got something The people good. that are watching, it's like you <sighs> don't just want to be doing comedy for your friends. I know. I think a lot of times we get so myopic. Oh, I you know. know. That's a big word. Oh, um, 
These are all are these hitting good? it, man. She's working. Yeah, yes. and I just added a bunch for January. Thank uh, you. WhitneyCummings.com. Go see Whitney live. She's coming to your city, Bakersfield, Cleveland. Oh, sorry, that's already passed. I did right? those already. Yeah. Um, so Sacramento, Spokane, Vegas, La Jolla, Salt Lake, Jesus Nashville. Jesus Christ, what a nightmare! A bunch of cities. It looks stressful. Um, see her live. Buy her books. I don't think movie. I've ever been to um, Salt Lake City for comedy. Oh, it's great. so good. You're going to love it. Are you doing, it's a great club. What are you doing? Club? Wise, guys. wise Guys? Love yeah, Wise Guys. Never fantastic. been. You're going to have fun. A totally new hour. No politics. Not one politics. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, good Zero for you. in good it. For you. It's like, I feel like people Smart should girl. know that. You know what I mean? Smart girl. Yeah. It's um, like, no, nah, it's over, right? No one wants to hear about No one shit. wants to go see comedy and like get in a fight I know. with their spouse anything else Jean? You know. watch the degenerates yes. i am uh the last one in the lineup lucky number six the number of the beast watch that it's and fantastic the ride or die tour check out the 2019 dates on christina p online and did the de- degenerates just dropped like yesterday today. 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 today great great um and as uh we mentioned earlier this is a rare occasion but we're gonna take you right now to our in-depth conversation with kate from Below Deck, who was in here visiting, and that will be that. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Whitney, very much. I hope that was... It's fantastic. You're the best. Oh, God. I'm like... You're amazing. This is so exciting. (laughs) We've never been more excited. No. uh, To have a guest ever, and we must do a proper introduction, (laughs) because whenever we discuss reality, you know it's real talk. Oh, yeah. Real talk. Oh, yeah. Real talk. Oh, yeah. Real talk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want to go ahead and do um, the introduction? I am so excited right now. I mean, we've had many famous people in studio. You are by far, I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm so starstruck right now to be sitting next to the one and only Kate Chastain from Below Deck. Oh, oh. We've watched you for years. I feel like we've been watching you for decades but it's only been been a few years working on boats for decades but yeah it's been uh five seasons now five seasons for those that don't know that are listening watching we are hardcore fans (laughs) of below deck uh the bravo tv show that takes you on mega yachts super yachts with a full crew of which uh kate has is a chief stew uh that's in that's we know the person, the lingo. Yeah, the person in charge, you know, you have to speak to the people that don't know. Yeah. The person in charge of the interior, this is service, uh, making sure that, you know, the rooms are clean and tidy, Perfect. make sure everything Perfect. looks great, presentable. Yeah, it's like running a boutique hotel exactly. on the ocean. It's like you're at, Ooh. yeah, like a beautiful hotel mm-hmm. and you want nothing but impeccable service. And what we've discovered, first of all, is that not only do we love impeccable service in real life, <laughs> we love watching people uh, deliver impeccable service on reality <laughs> TV. And we love watching people who know great service uh, yell at people who don't, don't know how to provide impeccable service. Well, and you certainly d- would enjoy Below Deck. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> We're so into it. I We're mean, so, And you know what I love best about it yeah. is that it's kind of like Downton Abbey when you think yes. about That's it. That's what people have said. Yeah. Um, Didn't it start at this, around the same time? I think that was the original pitch that Bravo had in mind for it. It's like Downton Abbey on the ocean. Yeah, it makes um, total sense. Yeah, upstairs, downstairs world. That's yes. right. Yeah. That's right. Um, and you end up, of course, being much more fascinated by downstairs. Oh. That's the thing. That's where all the good stuff that's happens. That's where all the good yeah. stuff happens. How did you... Okay, so anybody can obviously check out the show. You're, you're going to be into it. It's, it's so great. There's so many characters. But like... Before, obviously, the show, you've been working on yachts. How did it even come about? How did it start? My cousin had done it in the 90s, which I really respect because there's like no internet. So once you set out on that boat, you were like cut off from civilization. Uh So she would send us postcards every now and then from every different country. And I'd be like, oh, that sounds cool. And then after college graduation, I was like, I don't want to get a real job yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I'll just do yachting for one year. And then I'll make money, mm-hmm. and then I'll come back and you know figure it out. And you'll meet your billionaire boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, that was really my plan. Yeah, you know, so I was like, or I'll just you know float off into the sunset with a billionaire. Mm-hmm. That didn't exactly happen, but I did end up doing it for like seven years because once you start working on yachts, you feel like you've won the life lottery. You have it feels like exotic summer camp for adults that are cool. Right, bunk beds, shared meal times. You've got a Five star chef cooking your food. You've got oh, no yeah. bills. Love it. You're all living on this yacht. Uh, possession is ninety percent of ownership. If the <laughs> if the owners aren't there, it's your yacht. You're using their tender to go wakeboarding every day after work. It's just feels amazing. Yeah. And then that wears off. Yeah. Right. Um, but you feel like you're always chasing that first year dragon. Well, here's the thing: because Tom and I, every season without fail, 
we marvel at how hard you guys work. And we sit there and we're like, how do these people do this? Like, you're not sleeping. Um, and the exterior has it rough because of the, the, the heat and the yeah. salt. And then you guys have it rough because of the drunk, drunk people. People you're yeah. dealing and with. And also you're cleaning. How do you and you're, do and it? It's, it's you, when you see on a reality show, too, those cameras are always rolling. It's like... One in the morning, two thirty. Someone's still yeah. doing dishes. Kate's up. up. Pre- yeah, three in the morning. It's a lot of work. Um, but you're stuck on the boat. So there's not much more to do, and you're making such good money that um, it's kind of worth it. Uh, it taught me a lot about cleaning. It taught me a lot about laundry, and <laughs> a lot. I didn't know any of that before I started. And boy, now my favorite thing to do is iron sheets. Yeah, yeah. It's so relaxing. Wait, so what? So can you tell it like people what kind of money they sure. can make in that? So world? like a first year stewardess, I think I started out on a hundred. 89 foot yacht, which is pretty big. So a third stew of that size vessel, I was making like 2,500 bucks a month. And that's, right. that's, that's not bad for, yeah. for a young, but, but you, that's all disposable income. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so then if, right. Cause you're not paying rent, not you're paying not rent, paying food, food yeah. nothing. You've it's got great. no expenses. Um, and a lot of times you're in international waters yeah. and they're like international uh, bosses. So then if you're on a charter boat on top of that, you get tips. So let's say I was on a, uh, 160 foot boat I was second stew I was making four grand a month and then we had a busy charter December where we did like four charters so I made about 16,000 in tips oh. so in December of 2013 I made 20 grand just all hey that's good money. Uh, that yeah, really so is it, the work doesn't seem as much when you compare it to sure if, hey. you're, if you're getting that kind of money yeah. then you go like let's do dishes man let's do them right yeah. now yeah and you're with a crew that's international young well traveled yep. it's fun Fun. You're having fun. Um, when everybody knows how to do their job, yachting is actually fun. It's when you've got the inexperienced people that it becomes less. Fun. How oh, much? Yeah. Of, how much is that a reality of what's happening to you? Not being not filmed. Like you're out there, you're working. How often are you dealing with you know under train? Pretty often. No, I mean I think green people start on private boats. Charter boats are a little bit more um, intense schedule, a little more demanding. So usually to get on a charter boat, you'd have at least a year. You know what you're doing slightly. Okay. You get it. What's the difference between a private and a charter? A private yacht is, well, all yachts are owned uh-huh. by somebody so rich that we don't even know who they are. Like <laughs> right. um, a Russian <laughs> so oligarch, crazy. they yeah. like they pay where you can't Google them. Like uh, there's one Russian arms dealer that has a yacht <laughs> that just goes around uh, the South Pacific and they he never visits. And I'm pretty sure he's just got something on that boat that he's keeping moving. Yes. <laughs> so my friend's on the mate on that boat. He's got a great life. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. And so a lot of time to offset the cost of these yachts because just to keep it running a year is about $4 million budget with staff and cleaning supplies Whoa. and dockage. So to offset that cost, they'll they charter it. it. They'll yeah. rent it out for uh-huh. weeks at a time. Yeah. So, because that's what we noticed. It seems like constant cleaning. The exterior crew is wiping that boat down 24 7. Yeah, it's job security for sure. Yeah. For us, but it is such an expensive vessel. And I would always feel guilty when the owners weren't, well, not that guilty, but if the owners weren't visiting, I'm like, gosh, they're just paying me, like hanging on their boat. Yeah. But I've worked on boats that tried to cut corners and didn't have a full time crew. And with something that expensive as an investment, well, not really an investment, but if you spend that much money on a boat, you want it to. Stay in good condition. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. Now, I was just up last night reading my favorite book. Oh, Hello, you're so sweet. Kate Chastain, Lucky Charming. And what struck me about you, A, you're a fantastic writer. You're very funny. First of all, that's why we love you. Your commentary is so funny on the show. And what I've always admired about you is that you're never afraid to be who you are. And I think especially as women, society has us being polite all the time and smiling Mm -hmm. and, you know, and you were so refreshing because, and I hate using the word. Resting bitch face. Resting bitch face. But you're not a bitch. You're just a fucking person doing your job. I'm not a bitch. I'm just a little busy. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little busy over (laughs) here. I remember. Um, And the whole resting bitch face thing, I had never really thought I had it before. I was using that as a defense for the rocket ship blanket I made. It was like a moment of panic. Oh, so I thought like best. diversion, you know, just say something. And uh, it it's turned out it's kind of true though that I have a resting bitch face. So. <laughs> well, I just think you're a person uh, who likes what they do. You're very professional. Um, but what struck me as interesting is that you come from kind of a fancy pants background, right? Not really. I mean, I went to private school, but it's not that fancy. Um, but I, I do enjoy high-end service. Like yeah. I really do love it. I love being... Um, dressed up i love 
jazz lounges. I like the, the finer things in life. Yeah. So my dad offered to get me a new car when I was in college if I majored in nursing because <laughs> he wanted to make sure I would have a good job. Uh-huh. But I can't do it. I can't even watch Grey's Anatomy. And yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I want a job that's going to have some element of fun to it. Like being a nurse, probably never like, this was a fun day. <laughs> yeah. But like in high-end service, there's like people celebrating and Having a yeah. great time. And that's why I've always kind of loved that area. Oh, okay. Because I was thinking like, oh, she came. I was just trying to think of how shocking it must have been for you the first time you worked on a yacht. And you're like, oh, my God, like I'm really working. This is really hard. Yeah, that was a big shock because when I went to go work on my first yacht, I packed my suitcase and I was like, I'm going to wear aviator sunglasses and a scarf around my neck. <laughs> and my friend was like, yeah, if they let you. I didn't realize how <laughs> much of the help I would be. Yeah. But we had um an engineer on board and he brought his dog on board while we're at the dock and one day I was cleaning up after the engineer's dog that was my job I was below mm. a dog yeah. in the hierarchy <laughs> so that was a real wake up call and it was a tough adjustment yeah how big of an adjustment was that for huge. you huge um, well it wasn't easy but the good thing about the yacht is once I got the job on the boat that taught me everything, we were in the middle of the ocean, so I couldn't really escape if I wanted to. I was kind of forced to mm-hmm. evolve, but I'm thankful for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So hard. It's, um, yeah, it's, I, I'm, I'm so like fascinated by the world. I'm also somebody that I feel like I really appreciate, appreciate great service. Mm-hmm. And it, it kind of like really gets under my skin when I'm somewhere and not getting, especially if you're somewhere where it should happen. Yeah. You know, like you go to a nice hotel and you're like, the fuck is going on here? Yeah. With the front desk and no one's answering the phone when you call and you're like, and you're hey, paying been, a fortune to yeah, be here. Yeah, you're there. paying a bunch. And like, it's not that I'm, uh, I feel like I'm super demanding, but I also feel like, you know, I would be, if I was the person working, I would be trying to give great service to yeah. the guest. It I'm bothers not, me because it would. I wouldn't do it. I'm not high maintenance, but I do like things that are fair. And yeah. If I were entering this contract that I'm going to pay top dollar for a fine experience, then I expect them to deliver that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I also like, it's, it's also why like if somebody, I don't know, even talks to you shitty, you're like, yo, I, I treat everyone with respect. So the moment I feel like I'm not being treated with respect, yeah, it just makes my blood boil. You know. Now, at a restaurant, will you complain or will, you know what I do? Mm. I feel bad. I don't complain to the restaurant. I don't complain to the server. But whoever I'm dining with, I feel so bad because yeah. they'll be like, thank you so much. And then they'll walk away and be like, God, this is horrible. Yeah. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm like you. I'm like you. I don't punish the people. No, I don't punish the server. No. Or the, no. I mean, I'll comment about it after they leave and I won't be happy. But I'm not one of those people that like, sends things back or anything. No. I don't send things. One time I I'll did something. I'll send things back. Because if, it, if it's inedible, then that's on well, the chef. Yeah. You have to be like, yeah. dude, the chef. I had a sorry. I had a restaurant good. one time. I was actually in Florida, like a nice steakhouse, and I asked for something medium rare, and it was like clearly well done. And I was I like, "Hey, this. so I sent it back, and you know what they brought out? A fully like raw piece of meat." And I was like, "Okay, it's okay. kind of an and, fu." Yeah, yeah, I was like, it totally "But I, was. but I wasn't a dick about. I was just like, "Hey, this is definitely not medium rare." Yeah. And then they were like, "Here's a raw piece of beef," and I was like, "Okay." And I, I didn't make it a thing again. I was like, I took a couple bites and I was like, I'm full. Thank you very much. Yeah. So I don't know. One time I did do something out of emotion where I got like kind of disrespected uh-huh. by a restaurant. So I put a, a post on my Instagram oh and God. told them to leave negative Yelp reviews. And they did. A thousand. Uh, a this thousand. Is, I love this kind of stuff. Yeah, I like I like a creative <laughs> yeah. payback. Yeah. You know, I don't go out of my way to do it, uh, yeah. you know, to just random people. But if you like slight me, yeah. I love a creative Oh, it was great. Payback. Here's the thing. People <laughs> destroyed their Yelp and then the restaurant figured it out, called the comedy club that I had been working at that week and they're like, we want to talk to him. And they were like, he doesn't work here. He's a comedian that passed through. Yeah. And, and so they couldn't figure it out. Eventually, though, Yelp figures out if something is like spammed. Yeah. And, and they, they fix it. it. That's but, so great. Yeah. But it was very satisfying. Will you leave a Yelp review yourself? No. no. Me either. No. no. I don't Me have either. a profile. I don't even know. I don't even have the app. I've tried to even like look at a restaurant. Like, I like, looking, I'm like I don't yeah. want to. The only time I did is when I got an infection from a pedicure salon, and I was like, yeah. it's just kind of a health thing. Yeah, you got to be protect the other people uh, yeah. so that doesn't happen. That's really the only time I will. Or a positive, super positive. Oh, you're so I nice. feel like you should reward the people. You know, do what yeah. they're supposed to fucking do. There's a couple of things. Okay, there's so much stuff <clears throat> that we're like obsessed with on the show. One yeah, thing that so you, many you touched on. Came. I think you touched on it. This we we even went back. We started watching uh, season, season two. two again. When I came love on. season two because it was. <laughs> it looks like a documentary compared to like. What it does. It, it's like so yeah. much raw, more raw and rough. But I love it because we didn't know what we were doing with the show. Like right, I had no idea. I was just there to be. Did a you season know two. Lee before? No, nope. no. 
because he has that great line when he goes, shit, he goes, uh, Kay looks like she should be chartering the yacht. <laughs> that was yeah. really, really nice. Um, well, that's another thing that happens when you work on yachts. This is why I don't have as much money saved from all those great charter tips as I should because you're around the most wealthy people on the planet and you yeah. start seeing what, how they live. Uh-huh. And you oh, yeah. kind of, your taste kind of automatically, you want to yeah. live like they do. So yes. when you have time off, you're like, well, I made all this money, but I work hard. I deserve to live like them. <laughs> yeah. So it's like Chanel it, and it Louis traps yeah. you. Well, she said Birkin bag. That's what, that's you, what you want. No, like, no, Birkin bags. No, actually. I would never do that, actually. No, no. no but it was just that's the month line. of December, 2014. I, that's all of it. <laughs> Yep. No, I would never. I mean, I would, I've gotten Chanel's, but Perkins are crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I don't, how much are they? I don't even know. It's it started like, like a 15 car. or 20. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, yeah. I like Chanel. That's yeah. good enough, right? Yeah. Coco, good enough. I love yeah, it. It's good, good enough. enough. Come on. Um, <laughs> Prada. So you mentioned this. Yeah. How often does it happen? You mentioned, I, I think it's on the recent season, the, the fear of the verbal tip. Oh, the verbal tip. The that ver- happens in service as well. When somebody's like, you did such a good yeah. job. It's like, no, no. Yeah. No. Oh no, because they're like, I want you to know I appreciate you because I also know that I'm not going to tip you. Yeah, because yeah. I'm cheap. Right. Do you think? But it's they're a... like, but I like you. So does that feel good? Yeah, yeah. Like it's yeah. an overcompensation for yeah, what yeah. they're not going to do. It's almost fuckers. Adding insult to injury. It's like yeah. so. Like now, now I can't even be mean to you or be, like hate you because you're so nice. Yeah, yeah. you're so nice. Yeah, and, a... and I've paid enough. So anyway. Yeah. Um, so if like, here's what I'm curious about. So on the show, you know, people are obviously chartering for a couple questions. days. But typically, somebody goes on a charter, a, a yacht. Uh, it's for a week, I think, is the standard time, right? That's like yeah. A, so it, what is the standard for... Like, I've looked up and I've seen, you know, that you can charter these yachts, these super yachts, mega yachts, for 100, 200, 300 thousand. It's crazy money. Yeah. What is the industry standard for tipping? Is it a percentage of that? It's 20%. It's 20%? Like, so mm. in, fucking A. I know. That's a huge so, deal. I know. So listen. <laughs> so much so money. So much seven right. days work. So that's how I made all the money on December 13th. So let's say the boat uh, was $150,000 for the week. And that doesn't include fuel, food, oh dockage. Just... So they're going to spend $200,000 minimum for their seven-day vacation. But also they give something called an APA, an Advanced Provision Allowance, uh-huh. where they send us thousands of thousands of dollars to shop for all their champagne and lobster and oysters and all their food. And a lot of times we don't use all of that money. Yeah. So what they'll do is they'll tip us 20% on $150,000, which is $30,000, divided by 10 crews. So you get three grand there. And then they'll say, and you can have the rest of the APA. So you'll make- What? Yeah, so we'll- They're just like, wow. figure it out? They're like, well, yeah. So, because uh, because after seven days of the best service on the planet, they are just so blissed out of their oh, mind. Right. They're like, mm-hmm. take it all. We Take don't. We all. thank you because seven days is a long time to be on a boat with these charter guests, and by the end of it, you're friends. Yeah. yeah. So is they, seven days the typical length? Seven then? days is the minimum. Yeah. Um, I've had charters that stayed on board for a month. No. Yeah. That is a goddamn fortune. Yes, they they were Russian. This group, but yeah. um, I mean, a lot of the Russians, huh, have the big yeah in the middle any Middle Eastern. Uh, I there are, but they have the biggest, biggest, biggest boats. Like they almost like compete with each other there are yes. these two sheiks who were like competing they don't tell uh, how big they're building their yacht because they don't want them to like outdo them and then there was one sheik who like had finally built the biggest yacht he stepped foot on it for the first time and he's like I feel too far away from the ocean sell it like they just have stupid money oh, but geez, that Christ. size boat I don't like working on I don't like working on anything over than 200 feet because then I was about to ask you we're getting into like small cruise ship and it's just too uh, many, it's, like, 20 crew members it's just nuts what's the ideal what's the best size I love a 180 which is 60 meters and mm-hmm. that is usually around 14 crew it's big enough where you don't get sick of your crew members there's enough pe- personalities to bounce off of but it's not so many that you feel like you're just a cog in a wheel it feels like so like a family right and it's and it's big enough to for the guests to feel like there's plenty of rooms to go to and move and around it's and just you're gonna get higher tip money because it's gonna cost more the bigger the boat so okay. 180 is the real sweet spot and that okay. happens to be the size of the boat that we used on this season of below deck in tahiti in prior oh, tahiti. seasons we've been using like 150s which is also a great size but then you go to 60 meters and that's kind of like perfect which brings me to the next question perfectly a lot of the previous seasons and i think most of the time like i'm from florida so you're just exposed to the caribbean huge difference between uh, working in the Caribbean and Tahiti? Honestly, not so much. Because you're on the boat. Especially for me, like, oh, look, another palm tree out the porthole. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. but the only difference really is 
the language barrier because I don't speak French Polynesian or French at all. Mm -hmm. I would like to. But um, it was a lovely change because I've done the Caribbean so many times that this was at least new, a new location and made it exciting for me. But at the end of the day, if you're not getting off the boat, you're not truly experiencing the places that you're going as much. Like a lot of yachties work for bragging rights, but that's all BS. Like they're like sending photos home to mom and their friends on Facebook. Like, look, oh, just in Cannes, in Capri. Yeah, yeah. And you're, yeah, yeah you're when really it should be like day 47, every day is a tr- <laughs> struggle. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> so let me ask you one. I, I love the preference sheet meeting. So Captain mm-hmm. Lee sits down with Kate and who else? The bosun. And, and a chef. Yes. And, chef, yeah. Yeah. and comes the preference sheet, which is a photograph of the, the primary, mm-hmm. which is like the lead guest. It's his, her. Yeah. It's their 200 it's their party. Grand. Yeah. And they're yeah. crazy they're choosing what friends to bring. Yeah. Or they paid the most. They get the biggest room. That, oh, is that right? Okay. This so money is it's, I have no idea it was this banana. So, and then there's a list of like things they like, things yeah. they don't like. Um, and there have been guests who were Southern and were like, we don't lack vegetables or fruits. And Chef Ben was like, are you being serious? He was like horrified. <laughs> totally horrified. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, you know, we're like uh, ranch, right? dressing, and then Chicken stuff fingers. to put in ranch. It's and just like, okay. <laughs> such a funny contrast to have that chef because he's so posh, you know, yeah. Yeah. and that guest. Like, we miss Ben. He's we great. miss Chef Ben. Ben is hilarious. I, he's he's a genius. His dad actually wrote that book, um, Lone Survivor, that was made into a movie. So What? Yes. That's his fun, dad? Fun fact. Yeah, he's a, his dad's a New York Times bestseller with like a lot of military books. That Actually, that um, film's great, too. Yeah. Really great. Um, So Ben ha- grew up uh, very posh, and but he is a genius, and he's self-made after he left home like he's a such a good chef Mm -hmm. yeah i know we we, that's one of our because we basically watch the show it's entertaining it's dramatic and then what it is is you you go into fantasy land of like here's what i would do on the charter Um, and here's what we we plan here well and then we plan out like we're (laughs) like if we have chef ben like we're always like i would be like dude let it rip whatever you want do fucking blow our minds let's have yeah. fun because we like restaurants and yeah. food and, fine and then when someone's just like you got fries and he's <laughs> like, like yeah I can make some fries yeah. for you can I get some grilled cheeses yeah. and oh. grilled cheeses and I kind of get it because I do love a of who course. doesn't right. love a grilled cheese right. but you never think of it but if one orders grilled cheese and then he's going to make uh, ten more so like, that's a good idea and that's when it really starts setting him off <laughs> and now yeah. and then it's I mean I get uh, just, uh, grilled cheese after you've been drinking too it's like that's yeah, the thing you're on the ocean the drinking. Yeah. 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 yeah now but uh, okay so here's Tom and here's what we're going to do on our charter um, Here's our fantasy let's charter. Let's make it happen. Yeah, okay. Oh my God, we've already come on. Oh, I'm so into it. Yeah. So okay. I need to sell a few more tickets. Here, yeah. <laughs> here's Jesus what we're here's Christ. what we're not gonna do. Um, any kind of themed night, no party, no, no nope. themes. You know what? I respect that, and that Nothing. proves that you guys are elegant because it's like, <laughs> ha, here's an idea for a theme party: yeah. a yacht vacation. Is yeah. that yeah. not is that yeah. not good yeah. enough? That's the it fucking me. Well, bonkers you, you to see them do that shit. The audience, for people that don't know, Ugh, what happens is a lot of times worst. people come on and then they'll give their food preferences and we want to have a beach picnic. And by the way, uh, we'd love for one night to be uh, to be like a frat party night. Yeah. yeah. This is the kiddo's and, school. Oh, okay. And then it'll be like, you know, we have a... Uh, it's an all white party. We or, want, and then they're just getting so random. I think sometimes it's like, we want a blue and white party party with a fiesta sub theme i'm like what is this what is this um i think on regular charters where you're there for seven days the guests can get a little bit bored so towards the end of it you'll be like okay it's Let's casino s- night okay, we're in yeah, monaco yeah. like yeah 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 but our uh, pirate night because you're on the ocean but other than that the theme parties are like gilding the lily sure and also like hold, it's almost holding you back from having the best experience because now we got to serve you tacos because you wanted a fiesta yeah I, I totally agree. I like, I mean, I want it to be, I want to chill hard, great food all the time. Yeah. Uh, maybe do a uh, massage. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I could see like, oh, I've, I've been laying around. If there's a gym on board, I'll do a little workout, you know? Yeah. Read. Yeah. Watch a movie. I don't know. Just, I like to relax. You sound like the ideal charter guest and that's, you've got great taste. Now I do want to know. Would you want to do a beach party? Because I don't really understand why. Pe- not I do hate doing them because it's so much work. It's so much work. So it's like which training out. for Iron Man, like dragging these heavy. We things should tell people what that means. Yeah, so, so what happens is the the yacht is anchored. Mm-hmm. You can't pull a huge yacht up to shore. Nope. So what happens is the guest goes. We want to go over to that beach that we see over there. We want to eat lunch on that beach. And you have to prepare everything in two hours to transport 
on tenders, the food, the, the tent, the tables, the chairs. Salt and pepper, butter, bug spray, toilet paper, forks, napkins, condiments, uh, ice that melts. In the, we're in, usually in a very hot location. I've got to bring bags. It's just so Can much. I tell you something? It never looks cool. I don't even like outdoor eating. Me either. Uh, every every restaurant that I go to, like indoor, outdoor, indoors. What uh, are you doing? You have a luxury yacht, but you want to go eat in sand? No. Why do you want... Like I could see saying, "Hey, can we take the tender over to the beach?" Yeah, and but, hang out, yeah. and then we'll come back for lunch and eat on board. Yeah. See, I just don't understand why they no, wanted no. the beach picnic. Uh, I would like to keep the sand away from my food. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's gross, and I don't like. I mean, I don't know. I just, I just picture just flies. It is. There, and, are, it's hot. People are sweating. It's just weird. I don't like it at all. Yeah. Now, is it true that whenever you anchor, and you know, it's like it's day three, should the deck crew? Have all the toys out immediately? Yes. Really? Yes, actually. I I feel like we have to keep informing people. Yeah, okay. So, so tell what that means. We've got a deck crew and we've got an interior crew. The deck crew handles like all the washing of the boat and the toys that, for the charter guests, which will usually be about two jet skis, um, a trampoline that floats. Oh my God. A slide. A slide. They've got so many random. Good? Yeah, I, he just fell off his little tricycle. Oh, he's okay. He's okay. okay. He's okay. Oh. I talk to him. You talk to him? Yeah. He's like, okay, I'm okay. Okay, good. He's fine. He okay. doesn't have a bump or anything. Um, no, he's We're good. talking about- The uh, toys. The toys, I, I, how I, the God deck crew- Damn the toys. We don't have a tricycle yet. We don't have a tricycle <laughs> They should make yet. a water tricycle. They should. I think, yeah. Uh, I mean, the toys look fun, but it's also, They're here's the nuisance. bummer. Again, for you guys, but I guess it's part of the price, is a lot of times, I imagine, they set everything up, people are like, I just feel like laying down. Right, like I don't really yeah. want to use it. But that's they are paying so much but money. It should be ready. That also, if everything's in the garage, they're never gonna. Use, they, we shouldn't make the guests feel like we're they're burdening us. Right. Like, everything should look effortless. Like the jet skis are there if you want them or if you don't. It shouldn't be like them asking, "Do you think you don't mind, you know, getting the yeah, jet skis right. out?" That's right. So that's, right. that's why every like time that. we drop the anchor, put it all out. Put it all because out because they're paying big they money. Yeah. yeah. See, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd do the. Toys either. We were just talking when you're in there. I don't want a beach maybe. picnic. No, no. Yeah. thank you. Never. Why? Because you have Why? a yacht. Let's stay on the goddamn boat. Yeah. Put it's on your bathing another, suit, sunbathe, drink a champagne. Fantasy world to even discuss this stuff. Like that's the fun thing. I know. I love it. It's like to. It's wild. Here's what. Here's what I wouldn't do either. I'm not dressing up. Fancy dress. You Why? guys are so cute. You have the same preferences. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's my yacht. I'm going to come up in my pajamas and you guys are going to make me an amazing meal and I'm going to go lay down again. <laughs> oh, please Why would come I charter the make boat. It? Please come charter the boat. <laughs> I know, we need a little more scratch. I think so. God damn it. You know, maybe, how old are we? Maybe in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> maybe in 10 um, years we'll do it and uh, not send, uh, what's his name, to college. He doesn't need to go to school, yeah. right? So, so He'll what's, be a yachty. He'll what's be a yachty. the weirdest thing you've seen on a preference sheet? There um, was some bitch, I think, on Below Deck Med had white gumballs. Okay, was that like, was ridiculous. Gross. I, like, I, I'm embarrassed for you, lady. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, white gumballs? White? How do you have friends? Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you met somebody in real life that liked white gumballs, you'd be like, oh, look, here comes crazy white gumball girl. Yeah. Like, um, did anybody ask why white? What? Well, and what are you, gumballs? five? Like, you shouldn't be eating that Is shit. Is your jaw okay? Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Was it this season, too, where... It was so gross. Uh, Cucumber ovaries? What? Uh, the Timothy Sykes Penny stock trader guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wanted like molecular spherification, which I get is cool. Like it's yeah. very Thomas Keller. Um, a little difficult on a yacht, but okay. Uh, he wanted cucumber ovaries, and I've never heard of that. And I can't. Yeah. That doesn't sound like it'd be a good texture. No. No. Cucumber I like, ovaries. I like when you said um, there was the guy who had that that little dime piece with him, little yeah. blondie. Who, oh and then she was God. like, could you go ahead? And she was like <gasps> super rude and snappy. Do you remember? He's an older guy. Did, was this last season? And she yeah. was like, AF, AF? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, and then also it's like, it's always great when a man uh, has to tell his lady of any age, hey, yeah. dial it back, calm yeah. down, <laughs> calm down. It's like, what are you talking, is this your daughter? I'm not <laughs> sure you guys are going to last the long haul. You know, no. no. And how much do you and see? And immediately, of that? how That's unattractive be... she becomes. Like she's this beautiful girl. Oh, she started out and right away. Like, you're like oh. ten, and yeah. when she left, she was like negative ten. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, that's so sad. It makes people so ugly. It like, was the hottest people are gross. Well, especially when like I don't like when anyone's rude to. I don't care if it's the parking attendant. Yeah. 
You know, the yeah. fucking captain, whoever fuck it is. is wrong like, with dude, you? don't be like that. Don't be shitty to people. So, okay, so cucumber ovaries, and then what? I know I don't like the phone party guy. That's disgusting. You know, he, um, yeah, he had so many requests, and he invited us all out to his mansion in Acapulco. And I mean, I wouldn't mind going to a mansion in Acapulco, but then I looked at Air Force, like $1,000, and I was like, I'm not paying $1,000 to go to the with pool. Him. With yeah. Him. <laughs> yeah. And what is the deal with the phone party? It's weird. So, by the way, school. he just hammered all day? <laughs> all day. So hammered. And, and his, the more hammered he gets. his dumb fucking jacket and hat, like <sighs> trying to be like, I'm that guy. Look I'm at me. I'm the fucking crazy guy. <laughs> okay, Steve. Oh, gosh, it was just so, so exhausting. And I'm surprised he's and like Lee that. And Lee likes him? Lee likes going to Acapulco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they, Lee, Captain Lee has gone out there with him a few times. And apparently he's not at all like that when he's in his own home. Yeah. You know, I think he's just trying to make the most of his two days, three days on the boat. Um, but I blame Captain Lee for him coming back this season and being like emboldened. Because yeah. now, yeah, he was like, "I'm I'm friends with Lee. I can act however I want." But Lee's up in the wheelhouse, and I had to deal with him. I'm like, I didn't go to Acapulco. You come handle your friend. I really mm-hmm. like Lee a lot. Oh, like... he's such an archetype, stereotypical of what a boat captain should be. <laughs> what's right? his What's his history? Like, it was how do you become a big boat he captain. actually got into it late in the game i he think did? yeah he's got a real colorful past like he was working in the steel field mines or something really? up north I and then see that then like him and his wife were like you know let's get out of the rat race and they went to run a restaurant in like the virgin islands like okay. just picked up everything went down there let's hope it works out didn't really work out that well so he started just working on boats because they were in the caribbean and then one thing led to another he realized there was good money but he didn't start till he was like 35 I, I wow. feel like I impl- like just absolutely trust that guy. Like I would, I feel comfortable. And Captain Sandy, gonna... I like, I like me some Captain Sandy. I too. like her too. She's very nice. She's very nice. And you I work with her? her. You no, but she stopped by my hometown, and I took her out to dinner just to meet and mm-hmm. compare notes. And she was lovely. I just love also how opposite Captain Sandy and Captain mm-hmm. Lee are. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I think for Below Deck Med, it would have been difficult for any male captain to come in and even, you know. Compared to Captain Lee, because it's he's a stud of the seas, got yeah. the gold jewelry. He looks like the trident jewelry, the from, jewelry, the jewelry. <laughs> I know, I love it so much. The chains, bracelet, uh-huh. rings. What? I mean, it's so much gold. Yeah, <laughs> so good. that's a real Florida man. It's I, the way I see such it. Such you know? a Florida man. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's such an archetype. I, if if you told me, like, guess, like, if you showed me a picture of him with that on, I'd be like, immediately, I'd be like, the keys. I'd be like, that guy lives in Key West. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> definitely South Florida. Yeah. There is an aesthetic, the Floridian. Definitely. I know. You know what I like about Captain Lee too is his dread of dining with the guests. That always, I'm like, (laughs) I totally get it. He's like, ah, fuck. I gotta eat with these assholes, but they pay so much. But I secretly (laughs) enjoy it because the most, the bulk of the time, he gets to hide up in the wheelhouse while I'm stuck with all these yahoos. Yeah. So I'm like, here you go, Captain Lee, (laughs) like loving it. I got another specific question. Yes. Season because we went back to season two because we were so excited about this. Was was Andrew? That was his name, I think. Was oh, he Andrew Sturdy? Was he putting us on? Like, was he just trying to get on TV? I mean, yes, I think so, but also, I don't think he's the brightest. Oh, no. really? Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. In case you didn't notice, yeah. I mean, a lot. That's what's difficult about the job. A lot of people want to be on TV, but this is a safety thing. We need trained yachties because but he seemed like he was like, "Huh, I'm, mm. I'm smiling a lot. That's cool, right?" I'm like, what are you? What well, are you doing? He thought. I think he thought he could get away with it, but. If you don't know, if you've never worked on a yacht, you're like, how hard can it be? Like, I was yeah. on my first yacht, but I wouldn't want to try that on TV, you know? No. No. That's going to be embarrassing. It's probably not going to end well. Ask all the green people throughout the seasons, you know? Yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. god. Because it almost felt like when we went back to it, because I actually, <clears throat> I, at first I started watching, I was like, man, because, you know, it's, it's been a few years. Yeah. And I, I was like, oh, wait, I saw this season, I thought, and I'd forgotten so much. But then when I saw the uh, the rocket ship towel. That's the again, best episode of that's all like, time. That's like you, the first big moment of the show. You guys, I don't know. It was like, I didn't, <sighs> I didn't plan it. This is really, you didn't plan this at all. I've never done anything like that in my life. I've never made a rocket ship. I, <laughs> I, and tell, Let's tell people, though, the, listening what happened. Okay, so it's like. There's a guest on board. Yeah, and it's only like our second charter or something. So it's only been a week on this boat. I don't really know people. They don't know me that well, like my crew. And I'm just doing a, as good a job as I can. I'm concentrating. And this guest says well, I look bitchy and that they'd like right. me to make some drinks. And to be told you look bitchy and then to make drinks and then forced to smile is just, 
It was shocking, and uh, I only cry when I'm frustrated, and I was so frustrated because yeah. I was being humiliated yes. and then told to work. So I was like, I'm on TV. I'm not going to cry. I'm going to mm-hmm. get through this. So I make the shots. I bring them out. I make it through a whole dinner service that night. I go to bed that night thinking, uh, good job, Kate. You didn't let the man get you down. Right. Uh, then the next morning, I go to check the turndowns, and I just plan on making an anchor like I usually do. So that people know what, what you're saying, though. It's that... There's guests. They're out of the room. Yeah, so your, now the room always breakfast. looks fantastic, and you and you do things with the towels yeah. to make it look you, you just, know you exciting. Know, finishing touches. Yeah. So I usually make an anchor out of the throw blanket on the bed, and while I'm in there, you know, I like a creative payback. Yeah. And <laughs> the rage was still inside me and sure. hadn't been addressed. <laughs> yeah. So I was like creative outlet, and I thought a middle finger was my first idea, but I, that sounds complicated. I don't know how yeah. to do that. I don't know if it would translate well. Yeah, and that, I like that it's that, just complicated. I have a towel. Not completely. No, so hard. No, was like, it's yeah. not the right medium. So in fun fact, a rocket ship, a phallic rocket ship is not that far off from an anchor. <laughs> right. You just put the top together and yeah. like fluff up the bottom. And so yeah, I made it and nobody was there. There's no cameras, no nothing. And I was just playing around. I wasn't really planning on keeping it, but when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's really good. And I was like, well, he was rude. So I and left. Leave and it. then... People saw it and freaked out. I thought they would laugh. They were not laughing. And that that guest really was not laughing. No one was laughing. What? Wow. Wait, the deck, the the my crew thought that we weren't gonna get it tipped because it was pretty disrespectful, I guess. But uh, so that people know, it basically it, looked like oh, yeah, it would look like a big penis. Yes, right. because he had acted like a dick to me. Yeah. But, and, in, in but also, fairness, he's gay. That's yes, what I was just yes, going to say. Yeah. He is a gay man, so and they, they like those things. I know. Yeah. You're providing service. Here you go. Yes. Things, more things you like. Yes. You know, preference sheet. It's a theme party. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> like a bachelorette party. That's a gay guy, too. Oh, of course. Fabulous. Yeah. yeah. So th- <laughs> they wanted to fire me. Like, they really did? And so wow. now, it's week one, and I'm like, oh, my God. What have I done? I have just made a huge dick on a bed on national TV. My mother, my... And you've just I'm also, by the way, oh you're just for the first time working with Lee, right? Yeah. Captain Lee. So he's like, <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? Yeah. I thought they would like it because, you know, for ratings or whatever, they did not like it. So. Everyone didn't like it? No. No one liked and it. And then didn't, I, as I remember, because we didn't get that uh, through the whole thing on season two, but mm-hmm. it's in my memory. Didn't he eventually go like, I love it. It's he great. loved it. And then he came yeah. back. He came, he came back, back around, a second And now time. I visit him in Scottsdale. Oh, really? Yeah. we're fi- He finally got it. But uh, it it was a real scary couple of hours in a day. Wow! So you thought you, were, you thought you were leaving? I thought I had just ended my career on national television and embarrassed my family. You thought uh, oh you thought God. there was gonna be a plane ticket in your? Yeah, I did. In your tip on Yeah. Rope. Okay. But uh, turns out not so much. Oh, let me ask you, and I it's like a production question too. Yeah. The the plane ticket in the envelope, real stuff. Or yeah. production stuff. Yeah, well, I don't Real. think I don't think they actually get the printout boarding pass. Oh or, no, you know, no. But I don't. Yeah, I, is that a practice? I'm I, saying. I don't know. I've never gotten one um, from Captain Lee. Like I don't know what's right. actually in that envelope. But being fired, yeah, I've been fired a few times on yachts. And <laughs> really, yeah, and she discusses like, it in her book, Lucky Charming. Yes, Kate Chastain available. Well, according to my resume, Amazon. thank yeah. you. According to my resume. I don't put that I was fired. I just say the boat was sold. Oh. <laughs> because if they sell a boat, the crew has like gets a payout and you go to find another boat. So I haven't been fired, but I have been on about three boats that sold. <laughs> what What was your, um, you know, what was the reason that they were asking you to, to leave? On a yacht, you can fire people for any reason, even if they just don't like you. Because, and you had that? Oh, yeah. It's like show business. Where it was like a captain? Oh, like, yeah. I don't my like first you. yacht didn't like me, and I don't really blame them because I would, wasn't used to working hard. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd be down the laundry room painting my fingernails. <laughs> like, I just did not get it. And um, when you have such tight living quarters, like, one person that doesn't get it can throw it all off. Yep. And they're just like, you go figure it out. And when they fire you, it's aggressive because usually when you get fired from a real job you're not you're unemployed but you're not also homeless yeah so oh, that's right so if you get fired from a yacht Ugh. you could be in a foreign country and now you're unemployed and you're like now what and, and like and the tender just takes yeah. you yeah. Well, yeah that's what she writes about yeah. in this book is that they didn't they dock you somewhere horrendous i was in freeport bahamas which just looks like satan's shipyard i'm pretty sure you shouldn't get off the boat without a tetanus shot um <laughs> and that's where and she a hard hat fired. and i'm like finally after a month of work i'm like Ooh, a day off the bahamas and they're like uh you're fired you have one hour to pack in the cabal be <sighs> here and it's just like shit. holy shit yeah now i had a question from all these uh charters you've been on has a chef ever been sick um, I've had chefs not be sick but lose their mind because all chefs are insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, that way. they are. Yeah. They just are. Um, it's like 
to work in that heated environment and mm. creative and they have to like that rush. You have to be a little nuts. So I did have a chef that we were anchored off St. Bart's with owners on board and he went to get provisions, but he told the grocer to keep a bottle of vodka in the freezer. So it's like 10 a.m. He's slamming <laughs> alcohol. He comes back to the yacht hammered. He's throwing chicken breasts against the galley wall laughing and we had to... Um, Keep the guests on the sun deck and t- fire them and tender them off. Really? Yeah. And then Ooh. how hard is it to replace someone like that quickly? It's got to be... Mm, when you're in a yachting hub, you there's can, usually uh-huh. one on shore that you can bring in real quick. Right. So when you dock, they're all... And everyone drinks a bunch. You're writing about that drinking yeah. culture, too. Sure. And- <laughs> Work hard, play hard. I mean, it's an industry of people that have worked hard. They want to blow off steam. They got money to spend. And, yeah. You know. Oh, I wanted to ask you about this. <clears throat> um, you mentioned that you... Try not to cry on yeah. Charter, especially in front of cameras. Um, there seems to me to be a theme on the show of fucking crybabies who, for whatever reason, break down and call their fucking mommies all the time and cry about... Like, Rocky was a notorious we, crybaby mommy caller, They right? had to keep Rocky's mother's phone number on the dry erase board <laughs> because that's how many breakdowns she had. Like It was like speed dial. What? Like, Rocky's mom, here's her number. We're going to need that tomorrow again. Yeah. Um, I just don't get it. Uh, I, this, I don't get the confusion. Like, you signed up for the job. And if they say they haven't watched the show, they're lying or they're stupid. Like, yeah. there's no excuse for you to come in at this point and not know what to expect. And also, you're getting a lot of money, a lot of tip money. Yeah. Is it too much for me to ask that you, you know, do the job as well? Well, they don't seem to understand that there's work involved. Yeah. And, and then why does it matter what the chief stew is doing like what does it matter if what you're doing has nothing to do like you give them the order and it always bothers me when they're like well what is kate doing it's like bitch it's none of your fucking it, business yeah kate, i don't doing? i've never understood that either she's your boss like, dude. When, like when your boss is like go do this you're like what are you doing boss yeah you like, would never do that in real life but i think it's because you live with them you almost feel like we're more roommates than co-workers or yeah, subordinates. Yeah. you know it, it blurs yeah. the line for people who don't haven't done it a lot and i'll admit when I was a second stew, I thought the chief stew I was like, God, I'll be such such a good chief stew. How hard can it be? And then I got my first chief <laughs> stew job and I wrote an email to my chief stew that I've been real sassy to. I was like, mea culpa. I am so sorry. This is way harder. I didn't realize. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, I think that's with any work. You don't know what the boss above you is doing. I think you it's know. a good thing, though, because I've seen this. I mean, both on your show and like other work uh, environments where somebody goes like, eh, there won't be really a hierarchy here. And that's a problem. You should set up the hierarchy. Um, yeah. Be it's like, you, you listen necessary. to me. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's not because I want to boss you around. It's because we need structure to get things done. Otherwise, it's going to be a free-for-all. Here's the um, mm-hmm. reality show experience that we have, just so you know. Oh, uh, I do, you I dick. so remember you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, I my God. You. Oh, thanks. It's the short hair. Look at the hair, man. <laughs> that was the late 90s. There's Chadwick. We still keep in touch. What? Look how, oh my God, yep. Keefla, Susie, oh my God. This is why I may have falls. This is the first mission. Look how skinny I was. Do you have a permit frog tattoo? No. No, but she's got another one. I've got a tramp stamp. Before they were called tramp stamps, I got it in Australia on the show. And then the most famous uh, piece that I ever worked on (laughs) is right here. (laughs) I don't know if you remember this. What the hell is this? Oh, yeah. I worked on this She's episode. She's great. I mean, when I say worked on, I was in post on the episode. Sally says, put your hands down. Let's Sally see. Sally says, shimmy. She might go in here and do it here, yeah. Sally says, here she goes. Oh, Have you ever seen I this, Brock? Have you ever seen this? She's I remember the seeing best. clips. It went very viral. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It did. And it was... <laughs> she really... It's not, it's not Christians! Oh, boy. Did you not ask if she believed in God? Oh, she yeah. comes possessed. She's not a Christian! <laughs> could be a Jew and believe in God. It doesn't matter. She, she's tampering in doubt, sad and stuff. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, she did. The entire house is dork sad. It's dork sad. <laughs> she is dork sad too. Oh my gosh. I know. Wait, you ever have one of those on your charter? I mean, Rocky was close this to that. Yeah. A little, I want no money. A little I less want nothing. Dramatic. I want my God and I want my family. This is tainted. That's the money. That's the check. <gasps> From the show? Yeah. yeah. Oh, she's mad at production right now. She's mad at the whole, whole thing. Because they, they traded families, and she went oh, to like a loosey-goosey, went... like everything's cool house, yeah. and that lady was in her house. 
So she's like, was, you know, she she wasn't Christian. She was in our house, and she hated the whole. It was all evil. Everything was the devil. And she's like, I'm a God warrior. I give it up to God. I'm a God warrior, and I don't want someone with Tatum. This is amazing. Yes. Where is she now? I would love to know. I know. I'd be surprised if she were alive, but yeah, she. No, um, I remember one, when like... those tapes came in because I was working. I was the post coordinator <laughs> on this episode, and you know that's when we would send out uh, a PA just to fly to the location, pick up the physical tapes because now things are probably digitized. And so back then you had to fly, pick up the tapes, and that person would literally board a plane just with tapes. And these tapes came in, and I was working the late shift. And one of the editors was like, you guys got to fucking see this. Yeah. And we we all go in there and we're like, oh, shit. And everyone knew immediately, like, this is going to be Huge. Nuts. Yeah. this Because it's basically what you want, somebody losing their mind. Yeah. On, yeah, uh, it's the best reality show. On, on network TV. And when know? I was on Road Rules back in the day, it, we weren't, it, they weren't casting nuts yet. Like, we were genuinely, they cast, here's what happened. Mary Ellis Bunim of Bunim and Murray. She came from a soap opera background. So her casting decisions were based on finding interesting people, not crazy people. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why Below Deck is so successful. You got a good mix of both. Well, the, especially this season. We've got a great mix of intense personalities, but none of them are, like, off crazy. It's, like, yeah. fun crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess Road Rules is kind of similar to Below Deck in that yeah. <laughs> Right. Close spaces. How did you? Yeah. How did you love it? I liked it a lot. She liked the orgies. They had orgies we all the time. Off it. No, we never did. Uh, I liked it because uh, yeah, you traveled. How long I was did you broke. do it for? So back in the day, they filmed for two full months. So now in the real world, you used to film for like five months, but now they've got that. Well, the show's canceled, but they got the show down to like a month maybe yeah um but we didn't always stay, stay in the winnebago that was a production thing they just made it look like we did we stayed in youth hostels a lot but all in the same room like okay. bunking together okay. it was super cute what a good life experience. yeah it was great man nobody we didn't we fought but nobody hooked up of course it was innocent and you were in australia yeah and you did a tour around australia yeah. for two months yeah it was great i was what 21 years old and i got to see another country and you know, be on MTV, yeah, which was like I watched the shit, you for sure, right? Dude? Wow! And then you did the challenge. I did one challenge in Jamaica, and I was miserable. I had a nervous breakdown by day two. I was like, I can uh, these people because by then it was the nutbags they, they had are cast. Intense. Yeah, I don't like that shit. And also, I don't think I would ever like to be on a reality show with a competition, uh, like a Top Chef or like a Project uh, Runway or terrible. A I couldn't Drag do any Race. of it. The competition of it all, I don't like it. Would it. Stress me out so much that I will maybe eliminated on national television like th <laughs> that you're setting yourself up for humiliation unless yes. you are that one person that wins and that would not bring out the best no i'd be like well and especially because i was 26 years old by the time i had done uh the challenge and they were like sit on a block of ice in a bikini for two hours for a free bike and i was like listen motherfuckers i got a hundred dollars i can go buy a bike. a bike yeah, yeah. Like, yeah i'm too old for this when you're 21 they take your they money also... and they're like jump off a cliff to earn a hundred dollars like okay I, I gotta eat today it's yeah. a different the yeah, formula I mean, changed too, where the formula became let's get people crazy up. people well, and, also and hammered, yeah. Yeah, so it just became about because I went was I I went with you. They asked you to go to some. Well, I was friends with Chris Abrego, yeah, still to like, still like a dinner Chris. or something. Yeah, and I saw these the the cameras, and I was like, I I started. To <laughs> I, I mean, I got like down. real anxiety. I was like, I don't want to be a part of this at all. And then I noticed that I was like, oh, I'm just gonna literally stand in the background, and not be a part of this. That you know they were giving everyone drinks, and then. Somebody would have a few drinks, come over and be like, so what, hey, what is your fucking problem exactly? Like, out of nowhere. <laughs> and that was the fuel for the conversation in the shit. show. And I was like, this is contrived mm -hmm. and fueled yeah, by like alcohol. That. It's like, I, I don't like it. Kind of, like, if you're clever enough, you don't need to rely on this, you mm -hmm. know, to make entertainment. Yeah. Like, that's so base level. Like, yeah. I prefer, if, if I'm going to be on TV, let's... Make it entertaining and not just gross. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Look at these. Look at this. These dead dust. Right. They were smaller back then. They were maybe C pluses. Mm. I was twenty one and I was so skinny and I had those huge knockers. Yeah. yeah. When I did know. you guys meet? We met doing stand up <laughs> out here in LA a like million years, years ago. ago. Years ago. Yeah. We've been together for like fourteen years. Oh my gosh! Look at that. There's God damn. Fun. That was a far jump. It's, so there, that was 50 feet, no, 25 feet, and then 50. It was really scary, actually. Yeah. They don't let you do this anymore. 
at no, YMAM Falls. Sure. Oh, yeah, that was the nice. Oh. And we used to sign release forms before every mission, before like, we knew what die. they were. Yeah. And it was to release the company from any liability. And I was wrestling crocodiles, jumping off of cliffs. And back then, they didn't give a shit. No. To no. whatever. Were you, you know. are you really that brave? Or is it because no. you were on TV and you were like, well, I, I can't give up? No, I, I didn't want to be on it. Road Rules. I asked to be on the real world. I was like, put me in a house for five months. I want to smoke some cigarettes. I want to eat. <laughs> yeah. I want to like talk to people. Yeah. I don't want to do anything. And that's why they were like, you're going to go on Road Rules. Mm-hmm. And right. I was like, is it free travel? Okay. Yes. I was okay. living in a closet in San Francisco because rent was so expensive in the 90s. And I just wanted out. So, What's the most do? ridiculous request you've had from a... Charter guest? Yeah. Um, I get asked this question all the time. and So I should have a good solid answer but it turns out nothing's that ridiculous to me because it's all so ridiculous yeah. all so I'll right. give, but I'll give some examples like I'm just desensitized uh, I had a two week charter on they were Russians again and uh, I know they have a lot of money Long Island they love tees, right? votes yeah and also <laughs> <laughs> duck co- book Molotov salad. cocktails yeah. um, so they brought on their fi- their wives and their children for the first week and we get to know them and we're making oh for the babies God. okay bye now the wives and children are leaving <laughs> and l- we're in St. Martin and literally I see the private jet with the mothers and the children flying over us while a s- gaggle of hookers are walking on board <laughs> <laughs> like, bye. And it's hard for us because we just got to know your children and your wives. Yeah. And now we have to be like, uh. and so they were up in the jacuzzi having oh, a good time. And God. I asked, my stewardess came down. She's like, I'm not going up there anymore. And I was like, why? She's like, well, they all have something in their hand or mouth anyway. So there's not like I, there's anything I could give them. <laughs> Whoa. I know. That's awesome. Yeah, it was funny. Um, That's so brutal, cool. though, man. Yeah. What? Uh, so do you guys when 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 you have clients like that or, or maybe just in general is there a bunch of non-disclosures that these people make you sign I mean you would think so but I no. don't think they expected that their stewardess was going to go on a reality show and spill all their secrets <laughs> yeah. on podcast what about when the celebs come on um yeah there's huge non-disclosures oh, for like are. Jay-Z and Beyonce they always rent a yacht in the winter time uh-huh. and they're crew is like sworn to secrecy um i worked on one yacht that i had to sign an nda it was this she she's a music producer um and she has a lot of celebrities come on like kim and kanye came on star jones came on well that's not really yeah. the same yeah, field yeah. but, but, it's, but yeah. she, she only brings on famous people and, and that, they, they do make them sign <clears throat> yeah we had to sign to sign your boat contract you have to say i won't say anything and on the show Jeez. by the way when it's tip time the tips are always cash. Is that in real life too? Always cash? Sometimes you'll get a wire, but yeah. And wow. it's, somebody asked me, like, do they travel with that much cash? And I'm like, I guess they do. I That's guess so. wild. That's wild. Yeah. Oh, You're like, right. oh, here's 50 grand I just brought with me. I yeah, mean, but they're going on a private jet, so yeah, it true. doesn't really matter. I, I guess you're not going to the ATM. No. I'm sure in the Bahamas. I'll go get some tip money for like, you. Oh, it has a limit. We got to do it four more times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's now, what if this guy were like a charter guest? Would you, what would you do for him, you know? Black guys who love to fuck and fuck good. If you're a hot black guy and you want to fuck me at twenty three ninety five, if you want to move in, you can move in, but you gotta fuck me. I need I need to be what fucked a lot, man. Get rid free food, free rent, and everything else, man. You have a deal, man. Well, I, first of all, I like to know that I can cuss on here because I did, and now oh, I'm yeah. Uh, yeah, now I'm sure that course. it's okay. Oh yeah. Uh, first, I obviously make him a dick blanket, <laughs> <laughs> clearly every day, and then uh, I would make sure we went somewhere that had what he was looking for, <laughs> because it sounds to me like I wouldn't be having to serve him too much if I found you know a black guy, yeah, black guy. that likes to fuck he would and keep fuck busy. Good. Yeah. yeah. So baby Caribbean, you would stay there for sure. I get one hundred percent. Yeah. Hey, what do you think? Because I'm so. I, I don't know. I, I can't imagine doing your job. I can't imagine being nice to shit bird people. Like, yeah. how, what kind of personality type is drawn to this work, you think? Honestly, on real yachts that aren't being filmed on TV, the guests don't really want to talk to you that much. They, they're just there to chill out, relax, take a nap. And the Russians definitely don't want you to talk to them. Like, they don't. No. <laughs> No, they, they want to keep it separate. So it's do they almost, keep? To, do they speak English? Most of the ones that come. Yeah, on? they do, and yeah. they're nice enough, but, yeah. but they're, they're not, not there like to friendly. talk to us. No, they're yeah. like, I would want my coffee, and they won't even say thank you half the time, which is fine because you just drop it off, and go back to the crew mess, and whatever. It's the guests that want to talk. It's almost that's more work. It's like, yeah, hmm, we could have this fake conversation, but also I've got a bunch of shit to do for you. Yeah. Oh, so right. it's like, I don't love chatting with the guests that are nice. I I like a. Russian asshole. Really? 
Because it's just, it, you know, you know what you're so getting. that guy. Yeah, that guy for sure. Yeah. So that way, because you know what you're getting, though, too. The, the, the Russian guy is direct. There's no, like, yeah. it's just very, here's what I want, and I don't want any bullshit. I mean, I've worked for lovely American people, and that's great, too. Um, I guess the worst ones are the ones that want to party, party, party. And usually it's people who have inherited their money that are the worst. Mm. Yeah. Because most, 99% of yacht owners are self-made. Uh-huh. And so they're busy. They're still working. They're, like, you know, they're... They're chilling out. Their family is relaxing, but the businessman, the money maker, he's he's still working. Mm-hmm. But it's the ones that inherit their money. They don't appreciate anything. It's just that's a nightmare. So what happens like the uh, the morning after the hookers? You guys got to put on the nice face still, right? Good morning. Uh, yeah, you- and that's real difficult when you go into do make their bed and it looks like a murder snuff film because like there's like handprints and sheets are off the bed Holy and I, what I hope shit. is lotion on the glass door, but I don't know. <laughs> and you're just like. On your walkie-talkie, we're gonna need a stick, at least six foot long, and a lot of gloves. Ugh. Yeah, it gets gross. It gets gross. Yeah, because I've heard that. Sorry, the toilets are gnarly too, right? You, I'm sure you've seen. Well, you can't really put much down it, but then when they get drunk, they forget that. So that's not a good day for uh, the engineers. But uh, um, yeah, and also they drink so much. And I think when you're on a yacht in international waters, you're like. There are no laws here. Let's get crazy. Nobody yeah. can see me. We're in the middle of the ocean. Uh-huh. So they just, it's the worst behavior. Yeah. Yeah. It's a I got to do fall. this. Yeah. We got to do this, man. Yeah. yeah. Come on. It's only 200 grand for a week. No, no, no. That's, that's the minimum. That's the minimum. We haven't paid for our food yet, our <laughs> yeah. provisions, our tip, fuel, none of that yet. So fuck. I'll ask Captain Lee if we can work something out. Yeah. 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 Come out. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Just ask him for like an 80% um, break on it. I'll see what I can do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a banana. So what are you doing now? So you got Bravo. Yeah. You got your book out. Where can people get your book? Uh, it's on Amazon, and it's called Lucky Charming. And I, I recorded the audiobook, which quite oh, frankly, okay. I love an audiobook. You can mm-hmm. like listen to it while you're cleaning, drinking wine. Yeah. Drinking wine and then not so much cleaning. And where do people get that one? Uh, that's going to be available on Amazon as well. I've recorded it, and I just haven't published it yet. Very exciting. Yeah, but the show's so good this season. It's my favorite season of Below Deck. It's the biggest boat, the best location, the best crew. They're crazy and experienced. And it's Tuesdays at 9 on Bravo. Guys, get on it. Do what we do. I mean, you can you can obviously go Tuesdays at 9 at Bravo. We just buy the season pass. We buy the show so that we don't have to watch commercials. That is commitment. We, I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> we buy the season pass immediately. Um, or yeah, or you can go on the Bravo app. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you can stream it there too. But this has been an absolute thrill for us. Oh my gosh. Me too. Thank you so much. Oh. So excited. Can't wait to watch more Below Deck. I hope you guys keep making 50 more seasons of it. And um, thank you. Thank you again for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Oh, my God.